Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where tonight we're going to play something a little different. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. It's One Shot Night, and we are doing something different. We are playing a game by uh, Tyler Hudak that was written for Apocathulu, which is a post-apocalyptic setting. Apocalyp... Uh, huh, it's hard to say. Apocathulu is available from Drive Through RPG. Our game master is Tyler Hudak. So without any further delay, let's begin our journey into the darkness. Tyler? Awesome. I will do an introduction uh, of where you are, all are, uh, and then we'll go around and kind of introduce every all, all the PCs. Uh, I will say that, that within Apocathulu, the Apocathulu RPG, the setting that we're using is called Under a Charcoal Sky, which was written by Dave uh, Sokolowski. So here we go. The world ended five years ago. There was a great flash of light seen by the world, and then the sky became charcoal, falling into a never-ending dusk, and the shadows came. People started dying by the hundreds and then the thousands. Some would go catatonic. Others would scream that there was something inside them. Eventually, their mind would break, and they would become different. You knew someone was affected by their shadow. They wouldn't just have one shadow. They would have two. And that shadow wasn't their own. It was something else, something that took them over. Somehow you survived. You stayed away from people. You hid or traveled or moved away from the cities. You learned to run and run from the shadows. And you learned their weakness, strong light. After some time had passed, you went out and tried to find others. There were groups, but they shunned you away or worse. Everyone was afraid you had the double shadow. Eventually you found others in your group, a ragtag posse, each with your own motivations and desires, but one thing in common, you didn't have anyone else. You found a place to call home and named yourself the survivors because that's what you do, you survive. But supplies are running low, the fuel for your lights, the one thing that keeps the shadows at bay is running low. If you don't, if you don't find more soon, things will get bad. You've scoured the area and there is nothing left so you'll need to move on. But it's dangerous out there. The shadows lurk in the darkness, as well as other things not of this world. You don't know where to go, and you haven't seen another group in months. But times are desperate, and desperate times call for desperate measures. So with that, let's uh, go and introduce the your character uh, and a, a little bit of how you found the group. All right, why don't I go first? I am Dr. Uh, Zedek Miroslav. Uh, I was at one time a professor of physics at uh, a university that no longer exists, long since destroyed. Uh, but I'm hoping that perhaps uh, I can lend something with my abilities as a, as a physicist. Um, I'm, I'm trying to figure out some way that we can generate electricity to power our lights, um, but uh, it's very difficult to find materials. I found the group because I was scavenging for such sorts of things. And uh, I'm actually glad that I found them because I don't think that you can survive very easily with uh, all by yourself in this world. And um, I'm also trying very hard to find the source of this, uh, the, uh, Portfolio Chien, the shadow monsters, as uh, you say in English. Um, hopefully, we can all get along together. We'll see. Great. Uh, Chris, we'll go to you. Uh, hello, I'm Mark. I'll be playing Chris Baggs. Uh, I was, before the Flash, a 24-year-old 20, transfer student from Dublin. And I was working nights in a local convenience store. Uh, handily enough, my student accommodation was right above this door. Um, my pastimes, in, I'm a fan of tinkering with computers, anything science related. I love my gizmos and gadgets. Um, I collect Grognak, the Barbarian cards, and I love reading science fiction. Uh, I joined this community because whilst bartering um, in the underground, after the flash, I heard rumors of a refuge community and uh, I'm relatively new mate, so to speak. And I'm just hoping I can do my best to help everyone out. Awesome. 
uh, Cooper. Uh, I knew this day would come. I knew it. I've been preparing for it all my life. I didn't know what it would be. Would it be a nuclear war? Would it be foreign invasion, civil unrest? For a while, I thought zombies were real, but no, it's your fucking shadows that are doing this. What the fuck? Anyway, I've been prepared for this, as I, as I said, and I look after myself. I always have. I'm a natural survivalist. Before this, I had a shack. I was, I went hunting. I fended for myself. I didn't really have a job. The wilderness was with me, and I just scavenged what I could anyway. And now. I'm in my comfort zone, but I like to lead. And now I've joined this group, I see myself as their leader. That's what keeps me motivated. Yeah, he thinks he's the leader. And Cooper, by the way. I agree. Just Cooper. Uh, Big Bill Haywood. Well, all my life I've been a working man. You know, I did like a year of community college and that didn't work out. But ever since I was 16 years old, I worked construction sites and learned carpentry, masonry, know a little bit of electric, know how to do just about anything from uh, put in a bathroom to shingle a roof, to build the foundation, to build the whole damn house. And then when this happened, well, you know, the ability to build things turned out to be pretty damn useful you can build barricades you can build defenses you can uh you can do a lot to help people and to get by and that's what i've been doing i've been getting by and uh well now that we've got a community it's uh built most things fixed a lot of things been helping keep the lights going and uh i'm real concerned about what's going to happen if we run out of light, but you guarantee me, you get me someplace where I got tools to work with and materials to build, I'll build us a fine shelter. I'll build us some place to stay. Great. And last but not least, Doc Spivey. I'm Patrick. I'll be playing Doc Spivey. Um, yeah, uh, Doc's a, he's a good old farm boy from down in Nebraska. He uh, grew up on the farm until well, there was no more room on r- room on it for him, and he uh, he found his way into the army, uh, joined up, became a corpsman, um, spent a lot of years putting boys back together. Um, got out, was gonna follow uh, follow my grandpa's footsteps into uh, medicine, but then shit hit the fan, and everybody's shadow started attacking him. Um, after that, they called me back, uh, served in the reserves was there until they disbanded everything and uh well it was a whirlwind but ended up finding myself with this uh this fine group of folks and just gonna do my best to keep them together until we uh figure things out great so you are all in your compound or or hut or you know whatever you have what um Dr. Zurich, why don't you describe a little bit about what your your kind of quote unquote home is? Well, we've taken over what you might just call regular people's homes. Uh, it's more convenient to live in in a uh, a small uh, like a, um, what do I want to say uh, in uh, condos? Um, you know, a little community where, uh, uh, of course, all of the the grass and the the plantings that were originally there have been removed. Uh, we've we've put in what we could for gardens, potatoes, and uh, and other things to grow for for food. Um, and we've unfortunately the whole thing is is was originally rigged with lights to, to you know for security at night, um, which is very convenient. But you know bulbs don't burn forever, um, so and there's a lot of narrow little. Uh, passageways that are not so greatly lit it's a little dangerous um but uh but bill has uh has done his best to make some uh, booby traps and things for um 
wandering raiders, which is always a problem, uh, especially for a successful community. I'd say that we're you know eighty percent successful. You know. Okay. Yeah, and um, you know, the the power grid has long since failed. Um, it's been five years since basically the world ended or you know came pretty close and in those five years obviously a lot of the infrastructure that you would be used to prior to the apocalypse uh, had, has gone away and so you you have a generator that yeah. is uh, y that you use to, to power everything yeah, thanks uh, especially to God for uh, for home Depot yes exactly um, fortunately in in the five years that or, or so or, or however long you've all been there it's kind of hard to keep track of time now. Um, the, the, you, you've kind of exhausted your fuel or about to exhaust most yeah. of the fuel that you use to, to power the generator. And you've scoured the area. Um, you, you've gone out during the day, you, you've looked around and you just can't find anything. Um, you know you, there is nobody around you because, at, and when I say at night, again, it's kind of hard to tell because it's always night. It's right. always this eternal dusk. Even, even when you had watches and you've kind of given those up by, by now, even when you had those and you knew that it was daytime or supposed to be daytime, it was still this uh, eternal dusk uh, in the sky. Um, you would look out along the horizon in all 180 degrees and you would see nothing. You would see no lights on the horizon as far as you could see. So, so as far as you can tell, you're alone. And in fact, you have not seen anybody in months. You know, every once in a while before then you would see a, a car in the distance passing by. They would never come close to you because everybody's afraid that, you know, somebody could be infected with one with one of these shadows. Right. Um, uh, so what, uh, let me ask, um, we'll say Cooper, uh, you all have a vehicle. What type of vehicle do you have? I would say it's probably a Jeep of some kind, something that we would have been able to maybe add some form of reinforcement on, something nice and big that can get across the and any obstacles. We okay. get across small, like not deep rivers, but like very shallow. Yeah. Can, can you all fit in there? I mean, maybe a little bit cramped, but do you, do you all kind of fit in there? You know, the, the law was you're not supposed to ride in the back, but we ride in the back. <laughs> Someone can sit in the boot or something. Like that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, so one of you has a radio, uh, correct? Uh, yeah. I think one of you should. I have one. Awesome. So you've got a radio, and um, so do you keep this radio on all, all the time, or or how do how do you work it? I I'm I'm a very like on the edge survivalist so i probably have it on majority of the time perfect so <laughs> so again it, it's kind of you know getting down to where you your your jeep has a full tank of gas uh you know that you you have gone and you um are you have scoured the area as far as you can and you cannot find any more fuel you you've kind of exhausted all, all of your uh, sources and so you know one day night whatever it is you, you're all kind of sitting together um, we'll, we'll say that you're sitting together near Cooper's radio. It just happens to be in, in an area that's close by trying to figure out what to do because you maybe have a half a day or a day left of fuel in your generator. And then the generator is going to fail. The lights are going to go out. And that means that it's always possible that the shadows could come. Um, but you're, you're sitting there discussing and you hear this. I have someone write the numbers down. <laughs> so, so it's it it the the voice you know pauses for a minute. Or, or not even a minute, maybe like, you know, a couple seconds, like 10, 20 seconds, and then starts back up the, doing the, the same uh, okay. sequence again and goes over and over uh, again. Same number um, sequence. 
this is also the first time you've heard something on the radio in years. All of you have, have thought, you know, Cooper was, you know, a little bit out there for having the radio on all the time, but this is the first time it's picked up anything. Told you guys. You, told you. you weren't fiddling with the dial, were you? You didn't land on some stupid old uh, number station to just... Uh... No, it, it's on the same frequency. I always have it on the... 9538 divided by it's uh, uh no i was thinking maybe it was coordinates but yeah. that so so Oops. everybody can give me a either a science role or a technology use role um whichever is higher um, science is science. Technology use is basically how to use technology that existed before the end of the world. I, I have no... I have an 80 in it. science and I rolled 92. Damn it. So, you know, again, since this is an intro game, you know, I'm sure you all know how, how to, um, you know, play the, you know, a percentile game, but I'll just kind of explain it again just to make sure everybody's on the same page. You have your skill level. Um, if you roll equal to or less than that, uh, that your skill level, um, you succeed. If you roll a right. zero one or a success with doubles, so you know 11, 12 or 11, 22, 33, and so on, um, you that is a critical success. If you roll over your skill level, that is a failure. If you roll zero zero or a failure with doubles, that's a critical failure. So for example, if your skill was 50, uh, 44, 33, 22, 11, and 0, 1 are critical successes. 66, 77, 88, 99, and 0, 0 are critical fails. Yeah. So did anybody uh, succeed? Back. Uh, yeah. First roll of the game, got a 95. And I'm the tech guy. Off to a good start. <laughs> Doc, what did you succeed in? Uh, technology use, got an 8. Great. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, so pretty yeah, pr pretty low. Um, so you, you, uh, you agree with uh, Dr. Zarek that this is definitely not some type of coordinates. Um, however, you, uh, Cooper's uh, radio is, is a little bit old and you kind of get the idea to, you know, maybe kind of turn it to try to figure out, you know, maybe, you know, if the signal is coming stronger in, in one direction or another. And you are actually able to figure out that, um, the, the the general direction of where the signal is coming from. Very cool. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, hold on. Let me let me grab that radio and I, I pick it up. And I'm I'm just basically doing real slow circles in the room that we're in until I zoom in. What uh what direction would it be? Um, we'll say east. What well, and you know, we didn't talk about where you guys are. Um, you know, tell me where where in the U.S. or what was formerly the U.S. Uh, about where you are all located at. Massachusetts. Okay. Sure. So then we will say that this is going northeast. It is where you uh, where you would be going, or I'm sorry, where where it's strongest. So kind of towards Maine. I I have a. I have a theory, guys. I have a theory of what it is. So you, you what? I have a theory. You, Nothing you, on. Cooper, have a fear. No, a theory, a theory. Oh, you have oh. a theory. Yes. Yeah, a theory. Where did you learn to speak English? Where did you learn? To... I, I learned in university to speak English. Do, do you think I went to university, Zarek? Jesus Christ! No. In the old grapevine of uh, survival, yeah, us survivalists stick together even before even before all this nonsense. I we heard about nexus points. Nexus. Yeah, and they're like places where supposedly government would force possessions of people's properties and lock them up, usually in underground bunkers. Yeah, you, you, you had definitely heard of, you know, well, actually, go ahead and give me a roll. So you have a skill called post-apocalyptic lore, um, and it's uh, all of you or most of you have it. And 
each each of those is specialized and it's basically knowledge you have of some aspect of this apocalypse so um I, it, nexus points. yeah go ahead and roll uh, uh post-apocalypse lord nexus points uh if anybody else has it you can roll it as well 34 on 60 so that's all right time. um so you yeah you um you know that uh and you start to explain uh that the the nexus points were pre-apocalypse it was it was something that the government was was doing where they were kind of forcibly taking land for uh, using eminent domain and the rumors were that they were building some type of bunkers or underground bunkers um they were all over the united states that they were doing this uh, and you've always suspected that there was one uh you know n not necessarily close by but close enough um and this is this is starting to kind of confirm you know some of the things that you've heard yeah but so if it if it is if it's real there could be fuel in there could be valuable items for us so were these like storage facilities or were they like places where they were they're, they're underground like bunkers you know like you, well, you you would not you you know what us nutty survivors like we we have underground bunkers that we put things in and like supplies and that's kind of what these are. Well, yeah. Not surprised that the government would do the same thing. I you know the, the government may be behind all of this. True, true. That is a theory. All right. It? So it sounds like you're proposing that we leave the safety and security in our vegetables. And go Keeper, to that was an AM radio band that we heard that on. Sure. <laughs> okay. It goes a lot farther than than uh, FM. That's why. Well, yes, except that we have the difficulty with the sky, so we're not bouncing off the atmosphere. It's uh, it's difficult. But Maine's not so far. We could probably get that in the jeep in a few hours. Maybe longer. It depends on what we. Are. The roads are not exactly maintained any longer. We, we need to act quickly. We are running out of fuel. Um, Once again, what is the what are the chances though that this is just an automated? It could we've never be, heard of it before. Is, so is as it, as you ask that, um, you know, th this voice has been you know, repeating. saying this over and over. The voice starts to cough heavily. And the uh, the um, signal cuts out for about 10, 20 seconds. Then the signal com comes back with the the woman uh, starting over again with the numbers. It's, it's a woman lot. reading them. She's alive. That's alive. That's happening right now. Yeah, that doesn't sound automated to me. So there's oh, got to be all. some sort of secret <laughs> message going out to other government officials. Yes, yes. I think you're right. right. There might be all kinds of... We'll have to so, be careful. We should... We need to head north... We need to head northeast. Yeah, like docks. Okay. Said it. Signal. And these would be if... It's good to look out for these nexus points. They might not exist. It could all just be a load of bollocks. I don't know. But... We've got wherever, wherever it is, they've got power enough to broadcast that signal. That's true. So, yeah. I mean, I'm worthy of investigation, whether it's a government bunker or not. There will be power. Hidden. Is there a way that we can do something with the radio to make it a little more precise in its uh, direction finding? Some electronic modification. You know what? Uh, if you want, somebody can let's see here. Well, does somebody have an idea of what they would want to, to do for that? I guess it kind of depends on. Does the uh, does the Jeep's radio still work? Uh, you know what? Give me a luck roll. Uh, luck is standard fifty percent. Uh, if you roll under fifty, you made it, or or equal to or under fifty, you made it. If it's over fifty, you fail. That is over 50, 59. So the, 
So we'll say that the that the radio in the Jeep, um, it, it, it hasn't worked in a long time and nobody has just fixed it, tried to fix it because you, you know, there was no reason to. Um, you think though that, you know, it's, so somebody I think has a um, mechanical, a craft mechanical, um, they can use that to try to fix it. Or you can use what's called craft jury rigging, which is basically trying to perform like a temporary fix to gear. Uh, to basically, you know, jury rigging the thing to tr try to get it to work. Uh, usually it's temporary, but, you know, sometimes depending on how well you roll, it could be more permanent. The, so, Bill, you, you think you could get the radio working in the Jeep again? Maybe we could uh, just kind of head towards wherever the signal's strongest. I could try. I could definitely try. <clears throat> okay. So, so what are you going to roll for that? Um, Do you have a uh, craft mechanical or craft jury rigging? No, but I have tech use. That's the best I have. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll let you do that. Okay. Uh, I rolled a 44 and I have it at 40. <laughs> oh, no, just missed it. So it you, you start fooling around with it. And unfortunately, it does not. Uh, you, you can't get that working. Nope. You're breaking it you worse than it around. was. We just need to we just need to move. We know the direction, but the problem is if we're looking for let's say this is a nexus point and we're looking for it'll be hidden. It could be anywhere. It could be under a ruined house. It could be under a tree. It could be anywhere. That's why we need to find at least some way to hone in on the signal. Um, Bain's a big state. True. Sure. But and maybe, it's very wildernessy. Maybe the maybe we can find an old. There's got to be a. There might be an old radio station or something around that we could. It, yeah, if we can scrounge up, uh, scrounge up some electronic parts, as we go, then maybe we can figure well, something out. I have an idea where that's concerned. We could try finding an old pilot, because pilots had. Uh, a lot of CB radios for sale and they have antenna replacement antennas. You know, maybe we just need, if we get a bigger antenna on there or we find a, a, a CD, CB radio, we could install that. That shouldn't be too hard. I'm sure I could do that. It's in the CB radio. Yes. So, so because you brought that up, you know, we, we can do one of two things here. You know, this, this is the apocalypse. You know, one of the ways that you survive is by going and scavenging for things. So you all have a skill called scavenge. Uh, and this allows you to find useful gear. So um, we're, we can do one of two things. We can either have uh, you roll scavenge to see if you can find an antenna, or you also have resources. Um, I will let somebody roll a resource uh, on your resources to see if you uh, if you already have one in your possession. Um, however, you know it, there, there are some caveats to doing that. So um, you know somebody decide who who's going to do what, and then we'll we'll kind of go from there. What is everyone's resource? At? I don't know where it's resource on the There's a uh, box in the bottom right corner near off skill west. Oh, I see it. So your, your resources actually has three values. So actually, I guess technically you have four values for, for resources. Um, the, the, I'm trying to pull up a character sheet here really fast so I can make sure I'm describing it properly. Um, the, the, first, um, the, the first number is gonna be the longest number or largest number, I'm sorry. This is your uh, permanent resources. It's gonna be a value between one and 20. Um, uh, here we go, cool. Um, Apologize. All right, here we go. So if you look in the bottom right corner of your character sheet on the front page, you, you have a thing that says permanent resources. Um, this is this would be a number between zero and 20. Um, and this is basically a measure of how many resources you have. Now with that, you also have uh, three numbers uh, below that. One, it says at hand, one says stowed, and one says in storage. Resources that you have at hand; these are basically you know what you have the number of things you have carried on you. Um, stowed would be the number of resources that you have, let's say, like in your car, um, and in storage would be the number of resources you have here at at your your home base. Right. Um, depending on where you are, 
is depends on the, the, the number that you roll. Um, so since you're all kind of at home at your home base, you would, I would allow you to roll your, your permanent resources number, which is you'll roll that times five and try to get underneath it. Um, the, ca the catch to this is you're kind of looking for a specialized resource. So what that means is um, you can still make your resources times uh, five roll. Um, and if you succeed, you have this antenna. However, if you do succeed, right above uh, the at hand stowed and in storage numbers, you see three check boxes, some of which may be blacked out. These are, the, or I'm sorry, no, no, no. Um, I'm sorry, no, I, I apologize. Let me, let me rephrase that. So, so because this is a specialized resource, you will roll your resources times five. If you succeed, you have the antenna. However, you will also permanently reduce your resources by one because this is a specialized resource. Now, the alternative is you can go and scavenge for, scavenge for a antenna. And what you will do is you will roll your um, scavenge roll. Uh, and um, depending uh, for this, uh, because this is a more specialized object and this is the apocalypse, we're gonna say that you have to roll your scav your, your scavenge uh, skill will be reduced by 20 when you roll it. Ooh. I have really high scav. Well, I have 17 scavenge, so I could. Why don't we look? We're going to pass through a number of towns on the way there. Let's look for an old broken down electronic store or something. You know, I don't think Radio Shack actually existed during the apocalypse, but uh, you said <laughs> pilot. Maybe they, they, something. We don't want to go into Radio Shack anyway. There might um, be just things lying around. There's not, no harm as we're going, driving, stop, just having a quick scavenge around. There's no harm. You know, you said, you said a CB radio. Perhaps there will be broken down trucks along the way that might have old CB parts. Oh, yeah. Yeah, most likely. Good idea. Yeah. yeah. Haven't right. we seen a few old trucks around before? Let's, let's oh, pack up our cars around. Let's pack up all of our precious stuff. Let's, I'm going to pick some vegetables to bring along with us for food. Yeah, we'll. Okay. We'll, so... meet, in, we'll meet in like half hour. So you, so you all pack up your stuff and, and you know, you'll notice that you know, on your character sheets, you, you do have some, some uh, items on there. Those are things that you definitely have. You know, I, I don't think you all have this on your character sheets, but I will say that you all have flashlights that work. Um, the, the, anything else that you, you, know, you, you decide that you want, that's gonna require a resource roll when you need it. So I'm not gonna make you specify anything right now. Uh, we'll just use the resource rolls uh, as we move forward. I got I, I also have this small jerry can of gasoline, apparently. So I have that, but we, I'll make sure if we need it for the truck. Well, we probably have extra batteries. We can find those. That's broken down convenience stores and things like that. Right. All right. So you, you all get into the Jeep. Um, you start... Uh, if I understood you correctly, you're going to start going in the direction that you kind of saw the signal the strongest. Uh, we, I will say, you know, just we'll just make this easy. Um, at some point, you do come across, uh, you know, a Radio Shack that's right next to a Blockbuster in, in some type of, uh, co you know, convenience store, mini mall. Um, and uh, you, you find uh, the, the, the tool, the parts that you need in order to kind of get the CB radio in the Jeep working. Um, and so with that, you're able to uh, kind of get the general direction of where you, um, where you need to go. Um, so you, you start going. Um, it, again, you know, you're, you're, you're traveling. Uh, it's, you can't really tell whether it's day or night. You know, you, you've long since given up trying because the, it's, it's nighttime all the time. It's always dusk. Uh, so or, I have a question for the GM, um, yes. the keeper. So when you say it's it's nighttime all the time, does that mean that the sun doesn't rise, or does that do we see stars, or is it constantly overcast? It's it's constantly overcast, uh, and it's eternally gray. Um, you, you know, the the sun, as far as you can tell, still actually rises. You just can't see it. 
Okay. So, so if you can imagine, if you've ever been outside, um, about you know right after you know maybe like five ten minutes after the sun sets, where you kind of get that grayish purple haze to everything, that's what it looks like all the time. Whatever it was in the flash, it uh, introduced some particulates into the atmosphere that reflect the light, and we don't get sun anymore. That's why most of the only the plants that have our electrical light are going to grow. So you, you continue on um, the the whole as you travel, um, you're constantly looking for uh, lights, which would indicate some type of civilization or group of people. And you just don't see any and you've traveled for hours and it's all, all you see is, you know, the landscape and the darkness and as you go, there's a slow realization that, that starts to seep in that, you know, you, you, you may all actually be alone. It's, it's been months since you've heard anybody except for, for this person on the, the radio. And, you know, it, you start to get this feeling of helplessness. So I want everybody to make a sanity check. <laughs> Great. Yeah, my favorite part. Uh, that's a fail. I got a six. I'm uh, yep, optimistic. Yeah, that's a big oil. 98. So um, uh, success. If, if you uh, succeeded, you don't lose anything. If you failed, you lose one. Um, <clears throat> within, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, within this, uh, within uh, Apocathulu, as well as the Delta Green RPG, there are multiple types. There are three types of sanity that you can lose. Uh, one from violence, one from helplessness, and one from the unknown. Uh, or in this case, the the unnatural. Uh, think of it as like the Cthulhu mythos of of the world. Um, however, if if you lose sanity from violence or helplessness, <clears throat> and you don't go insane, you right net right near your sanity uh, on your character sheet, you should see some check boxes uh, for helplessness or violence. If you lose sanity and you don't go insane or don't don't hit your breaking point. Um, then uh, you can check one of those boxes. And if those boxes ever get filled, that means you can no longer lose sanity. Well, no, that's not true. You always succeed the sanity checks for that type of uh, sanity. Um, however, something bad does happen to your character when, when that happens. Yeah. And, and I didn't mention you know, um, breaking point. So just uh, to, to let you know, when you look at your character sheet, you'll ha you should have two numbers uh, that were initially kind of circled. One was in a circle, and I believe one was in a checkbox. Um, the the number in the circle was your starting sanity. Um, the number in the check or the the square is a uh, is your breaking point. If you ever hit that number, you go temporarily insane. Yeah. So. So if you ever hit that, or if you ever lose more than five in one roll, let me know. So, so Tyler, if you, you if you fail, you lose one sanity point, and then you mark one on the helpless checkbox. Yes. Gotcha. <clears throat> now, if you ever hit your breaking point, you erase all the checkboxes. Or I'm sorry, let me phrase that. If you ever if you go insane or hit a breaking point from that type of sand loss, then you erase those check boxes. So let's say we would do another helplessness sanity check and you would go, you would hit your breaking point, then you would erase all those check boxes and you'd have to start over. Thanks, Tyler. So, yep. Thanks be to God that we got that box of pencils at the store. <laughs> um you you continue on. Um it's again, you're, you're following the signal. You can hear it in the background. At some point, it just becomes, for some of you, it becomes noise. For others of you, it just starts grating on your nerves because it's the same numbers over and over again. Uh, every once in a while, the voice does cough. Uh, and it, uh, actually, um, if anybody has medical uh, or medicine, uh, go ahead and make a roll. That's a success for Doc. You get a, got a nine again. Nice. <clears throat> Did anybody else roll? No. All right. So, so Doc, you, 
you know, you've, you've heard this woman cough multiple times. Um, the, you, you can tell that it's just not like she has a cold. There, there's something seriously wrong with, with this person. You know, there are a couple of times where she coughs and it's pretty violent and sounds uh, liquidy, I, I guess is, is the best way to put it. Um, like she's coughing up things. Uh, so definitely not good. Um, as you start, uh, as you've gone for a little while, um, you all see in the distance, not 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 really straight ahead, but in the general forward direction that you're going, a light on the horizon. Uh oh, we need to be very careful. It's not some camp of uh, evil bikers, or uh... we need to we need to be cautious. Yeah, I agree. May maybe, maybe dim the headlights a bit. Yeah, maybe and maybe we, when we get a bit closer. We just, one of us drops out and just takes a quick look ahead. We uh, have to be able to see the road. They can, if we can see them, they might already have seen us. True. Sure. It, dep it depends and on, it depends on how big the camp is and how competent they're. Uh, yeah. What kind of light is it that we see? That's it's. When, when you first see it, it, it's really hard to tell. It's just like this dot on, on the horizon, and, and you can absolutely see it. I'll, I'll say that you, you, are, you are on a road, an overgrown road, you know, a, a road that's you know, overgrown over the last five years or so. Um, but you, you, at first, it starts as a dot. And it, once it starts to get, uh, you get you know, somewhat closer, it, the, the, the light grow, grows, but it's very, very bright, much brighter than what uh, you had at your uh, compound. Um, as, as you get closer, uh, how, uh, well, how close do you want to get? Is the signal getting stronger? The signal is getting stronger as you get closer. That might be the place we want to go. Yeah, hold on, everybody. Just let's just slow the car, slow the jeep down for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I've been listening to that that lady list off lift the uh, list off those numbers for hours and hours with y'all. And uh, there's one thing she's uh she doesn't sound healthy. So we could potentially go in and where people are infected with some in addition to the sh to the uh to the shadows. So. Mm. I don't know if we should just go in there and how do you do without uh, maybe trying to scope things out first? That would be, well, that'd be reasonable. I'll, I don't mind going in and checking checking out the place from a, from a lot. Maybe, maybe there's some tree overgrowth that I can crawl around and have a look. Well, like, a, like I see, I, I think that they know we're coming. If they can, if we can see their light, then uh, I mean it's dark out here. All they they can see our light for sure. Okay. Um, but I'm thinking, what if you get to a point where we can signal them? Does anybody know like a Morse code or? I, I will also say that it's reasonable that at least one of you has a pair of binoculars. Oh yeah, okay. I'd, I'd probably be me. <laughs> I'd probably... uh, oh, guys, I just forgot I have these binoculars that oh. I can use. So you, um, uh, again, though, how, how close do you want to get? So let's say like a quarter mile. It, does that sound? Yeah. Good? yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you get about a quarter mile away. Um, Cooper jumps out uh, or stands on top of the Jeep uh, and starts looking at the binoculars. While he's doing that, I want everybody else to make an alertness roll. Uh, nope. Uh, uh, that's a regular pass. Okay, yeah, pass. All right, great. Pass. So, so Cooper, you um, you you jump up on the jeep or jump out, and and as as you do, um, somebody shuts off the radio or, or shuts off the, the car because you don't want to, you know, if there is somebody there, you don't want to um, kind of alert them to your presence. Uh, you scan that that area with um, with your binoculars, and you can see what appears to be a very large warehouse. Um, which is illuminated by very bright floodlights. Um, the entire area is surrounded by a barbed wire fence, uh, and there is a guard tower on each of the four corners. Um, 
the road that you're on or the remnants of the road that you're on leads directly to it. And there is a guard shack with a uh, metal bar gate uh, in front of it, but the metal bar gate is broken off. It, it, it looks like it may have rusted years ago. Um, and you see a sign that says Aberdeen State or US government Aberdeen station number 14B. Wow. The, the, rest, the rest of you who um, rolled a uh, success on your alertness roll, um, you, when the car shuts off, you still hear the, the, the numbers, the, the woman uh, saying the numbers, and you slowly realize that it's coming from that area. It's almost like there, there's loudspeakers there that uh, are broadcasting it. Could, could I uh, see Cooper, it? you don't see any, any people. It, it looks deserted. All right. All right, guys. I'll, I'll relay the out, out look how it was laid out, but I also go, guys, um, there's no people, but I don't, th I think we should drive a bit closer and hide the car somewhere and go on foot. Well, there's no people outside. Yeah, that's why, but they could be hidden. Some, there could be people. You could be anywhere. in the warehouse. We've got to be, We've got to be careful. Can you guys hear that? It sounds like the radio's still playing over loudspeakers. Oh, yeah. So it could oh. be a trap. Yeah, that's the that's could why be a trap. I, but why why trap? I we should drive up. Could also be the last person left in their base for some reason. But that's why straight. would they, they just call out numbers? Mm -hmm. Might not be for Strange. us. Well, Message strange. Message might be for Somebody else. some kind of code that we just don't know but i just reckon we drive a bit closer we put it in we put the put the jeep in a bit of overgrowth cover it with some whatever we can find and then walk the rest because driving all the way up i think if there is anyone they'll definitely be able to hear it Do yeah that sounds good Eight, and then we three. walk and be cautious lead the way cooper I will lead the way. Don't you worry that. <laughs> so, so I'm sorry. Are are you all walking up or are you driving up? Driving slight, uh, slightly closer. Okay. But then parking it, covering it up with whatever we can find. Okay. Like camouflage and then walking the rest of the way. So, um, you know, you, you drive up a, a bit farther. You you know, it, from looking at it, you can get about you know a thousand, two thousand yards to it. Uh, and then it kind of opens up into a big field. Before then is is a forest, and there's there's multiple places that you can kind of pull off and hide your your jeep. You can even you know we'll even say that you're able to kind of pull it off and turn it around so that if you for whatever reason run back, you can jump in. You don't have to back out. You can just you know immediately just start okay. you know booking it down the road. Yeah. Um, so Thank you you, brains. you all start to slowly uh, approach. Um, how are you uh, approaching? Are you just Walking down the road, it's basically a big open field that leads to to this uh, you know warehouse with the the barbed wire fence around it. Is I'll there a say. ditch or anything on the side of the road? Is there a low area? Tall grass. Uh, there's definitely tall grass. It, it's definitely overgrown. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't say there's a ditch, but you know, there's definitely kind of places that you can hide. Um, if if you'd like, uh, you can all make a sneak roll. Uh, I think it's either sneak or stealth. I can't remember which one it is. Stealth. Yeah. Stealth. You, you may all make a stealth roll. Yeah, and I'll, I'll be staying ahead of everyone just because I'm probably the best equipped in case. <laughs> I'm bringing my hammer. I know it's that. not really easy to stealth. but um... Oh, I, I succeeded my stealth. Sorry, Tyler. Um, if you have no number in there, is it just base 10 for stealth? Uh, yeah. Is that the number in the parentheses? That's yeah. Or parentheses? Correct. Yes, yes. So if you don't okay. have a number, then it's just the number in the brackets. Okay, gotcha. Keep your eyes, Cooper, on the on the, the towers yeah. to make sure they're not going to pick us off with a shotgun. Or a... Don't worry, don't worry. <clears throat> and as as I say, don't worry. I've gone stealth because I've done that. So, so for those of you who make it, you're able to kind of you know duck down in in the the overgrown grass, and and the grass is pretty tall. It's probably at least two or three feet high. Um, you're you're able to kind of duck in there and kind of hide and. It, 
this is one advantage to it being eternal uh, dusk or, or night. You know, everything is, is easier to hide. Um, those of you who failed, you, you're, you're not quite getting it. You're, you're kind of moving around, but you're making a lot of, of, of noise and, and moving the grass around. So it's pretty easy to spot you. Um, Cooper, yeah, I assume you still have the binoculars. Um, as, yeah, no. as you get closer, you're not seeing anybody. You don't see anybody in the guardhouse. And actually, I, you, you're all close enough to see this. There's nobody in the guardhouse. There is nobody in the, the towers. There's nobody walking around. In fact, the the, the grass um, around the warehouse is overgrown. The even the, the the driveway and the concrete up to it has cracked, and you know nature has started to overtake it. Okay. Well, um, I, if we're lucky, there's nobody there except there's a bunch of supplies. Well. Might be right. looking at our new home. One That's of, the hope. Uh, so one of you check that guardhouse. Check inside, and then. Okay, I'll check the guardhouse. Yeah, I'm gonna go straight. I'm gonna, obviously, because I'm ahead. I'm just gonna check around the court, like, round in front of the warehouse more, and just double check because I'm very cautious okay all right so so cooper's kind of going around the warehouse uh bill is going up into one of the guard towers what is everybody else doing i am hanging outside the gate until it, do we get to clear i guess okay <laughs> yeah i'll stay with the two doctors okay Can I take those binoculars yeah. up in the tower with me to get a yeah. to get a perspective cooper yeah oh I'll, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll cook it to you <laughs> Okay, so um, Bill, we'll, we'll, we'll do you first. Uh, you uh, go in, um, you see C Cooper kind of, you know, darting back and forth between debris that's on the ground. There, there's a couple vehicles there that, but they're just completely rusted out. Um, you, you start climbing up the, the gatehouse, uh, or I'm sorry, not the gatehouse, the, the guard tower. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and let me say too that when you both pass the guard house, it was completely empty. There, there's kind of debris all over the place. Nature has definitely overtaken taken it, um, but there's nobody in there. It doesn't even look like there's any signs that anybody has been in there for a long time. Uh, Bill, as you go up the, the guard tower, you get to the top um, and you start looking around. Um, Cooper, you can't see because he's like a ninja right now. The, the other three, you can easily pick out in, in the grass. Um, Dr. Zarek is kind of moving around, uh, looking up and down, you know, not very stealthily, um, but you don't see anybody. Um, just like what you um, what you saw in, in the guardhouse, the the guard uh, tower is right. is empty. Um, it uh, it looks like it has um, been you know not used in a long time. The, the in fact one of the windows was open, and you can see where you know the weather over the last five years, the the winter, the the rain has kind of started to erode some of the things inside. Uh, there's moss and you know mold growing everywhere. Um, Cooper, you start going around. Um, <clears throat> you go um, through uh, the side. You go past the side. The, the warehouse is fairly large, actually. Um, the the there's no side entrances. Um, think of it as like a big government uh, warehouse where it has. It's probably you know a good two stories tall. Um, there is a big uh, you know do uh, doors on the front of it, which would allow vehicles to go in and out. There's no, no doors on the side, but there's high up windows. It's too high for you to look in. Um, although you can see that there's definitely light on inside the warehouse. Um, you get around to the back. Uh, give me an alertness roll. As he kind of goes around the back, those of you who could see him, you see that he kind of disappears. And uh, Bill, even if you um, could see him. He, he he goes out of view at that point. Thirty nine okay. on forty. Nice. <laughs> so so you get around back and you do see a, a door. Um, the door in, into the warehouse uh, is kind of partially open, uh, and you're able to kind of look through. Um, and you see that the warehouse is. Um, well, you see a couple of things, you know, first off, uh, the thing that stands out is the warehouse is for the most part empty. The, 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 what you see in there is uh, it, in the very center of the, the warehouse is a, 
<clears throat> excuse me, uh, is a large kind of fenced platform. It, it looks like it's probably, you know, maybe 10 feet by 10 feet. And it's got metal, uh, like a metal fencing around it and a panel uh, on it. Uh, additionally, you see what looks like army, two or three army uniforms in various places uh, in the um, in the warehouse, just kind of lying there. It looks like you know so somebody was maybe had had been there uh, and their clothes or had just you know fallen down. Um, but that's not what the alertness roll was for. What you also find is outside of the um, of the warehouse, uh, kind of about you know maybe twenty feet away from the back, you hear a noise. Uh, it, it, uh, you hear a mechanical noise. Uh, and you can just kind of make out that in the ground, <clears throat> excuse me, um, in, in the ground is a large vent, uh, in the ground, um, a large metal vent. Uh, and you can hear what you distinctly uh, know is the sound of a generator coming from somewhere down in that vent. The vent goes into the ground. Does it look like I could remove it? Um, Maybe uh, you you can so you have well you have your flashlight you shine the flashlight down you, you definitely could um, you could open it up it's like a large metal grate uh, and the lock has long since deteriorated uh, and there's a ladder that goes down but it goes down very far and uh, probably like two three hundred feet uh, and then you know but your flashlight doesn't shine down that far yeah. in order to see. Uh, before I go back to the others to report, at, at the gap in the door, I want to pick up a little pebble or whatever and just throw it in mm -hmm. just to see if there's any anyone hiding or anything that might react you, to it. You, you throw it in and there's nothing. All right. You hear the, the bouncing of the pebble over... Well, actually, you don't even hear that because... You can absolutely see the loudspeakers now that the voice is saying the numbers over and over again. Okay. All right. So I'll go back to the others and I'll relay about the generator and the inside. Bill, are you going to stay in the guard tower or are you going to meet up with everybody else? I'm going to come down as soon as I'm sure that there's nobody creeping around or that there's anything going on out, outside the perimeter and what I can see. Yeah, I'll definitely come. I'll give the signal for the others to come in okay. at least this far and then come down to meet them when they do. Okay. Is, it, is everybody doing that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and you see the same thing in the, in the guard tower or the, the guard house where it's empty. Nature has overtaken it. Um, you know, anybody who looks in there, you, you know, you find a couple, you know, small things like uh, a, a, a clipboard, uh, the paper has, from the clipboard has long since uh, deteriorated. Um, but it's very obvious from everything that you're seeing that this was a U.S. Army installation. So quick question, um, in our experience, have there been animals that have survived as well as humans? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that, that's a good point too. To your knowledge, the shadows don't go into animals, but you know, you, you, you've never seen it. That doesn't necessarily mean it can't happen. Um, so animals have survived and you can, we can kind of hunt and subsist on mm -hmm. some animals. Yes, have. yeah, absolutely. Have okay. we seen what happens to a person when the shadow goes into them? you have um and so what what happens and uh dr zarek you you would absolutely know this how much you relate to the others or how the how much the others have experienced this i will leave that up to all of your characters um but you know that um when somebody is for lack of a better term possessed by one of these shadows the, the shadow kind of takes over that person and and basically controls their body. They're, they're able to um, control that person. However, it's not permanent. Uh, eventually, that person's body um, deteriorates to the point where it just collapses into a pile of ash. And then the shadow leaves and has to find a new host, from what you can tell. Mm. And, and I will say that you all, like, like I've said before, you all know that bright light um, does uh, affect the shadows. So, Cooper, you have said that you've seen some uniforms lying on the floor. Yes. Uh, that is not a good sign. If, what? In my experience, if somebody is possessed by one of the shadow creatures, 
when they're finished with them, they kind of disintegrate. They could just be piles of ashes with their uniforms lying on the ground. True. I didn't, I didn't go in. I just threw a stone in there to see if I could get a reaction. I've, I didn't go in. I've, I've had a theory for some time that the shadows may be originating from certain places. Uh, and I'm, I'm wondering if there is something something that could be a government agent or who knows what. They, they did something and allowed these things in to our plane of existence. Uh, I'm a physicist and I sound like a crackpot. Um, but Sounds like you should be hanging out was with talking me about life. something like that a while ago. He's been talking about that for years, the government. Uh, you also under- said that it could be underground facility. Maybe that's what this is. Yep. I reckon we are at a nexus point. Well, do I can we hear find a generator down? Do we go th- that way? Or do we find to try to find a door? Maybe we check in the warehouse first, as a group. Yeah. And then worry about the vent, because two of us could lift that vent up, but the flashlight doesn't go all the way down. It's probably about three hundred feet down. So. Well, and you can guess that that's not the way that they went in and out of the facility. No, but it's definitely our way um, of some kind. It's, a, it's an army facility, right? Um, yeah. Doc, Doc spent some time in the army. He'd, uh, he, yeah. Um, there's definitely going to be more than one way in and out. They wouldn't they wouldn't narrow themselves down to just one choke point where, where shit could go wrong. So there's, there's definitely going to be another. I imagine a big somewhere. giant vault door somewhere. Fellas, an elevator. Fellas, yes, you think we should bill. bring the trunk up, the truck up, because if we go down there and there's something mean down there that's gonna come after us, I'd rather not have to run a quarter of a mile to get the truck. Yeah, bring I, the truck in. Yeah. yeah, maybe, uh, maybe take a look around for anything useful that we can load up in the truck in case we do have to get out of here here in a hurry. We don't want it to be a completely useless. Yeah, truck. especially uh, before we go down in uh, that van. I'll go get the truck. It's my turn anyway to drive. Okay. Uh, yeah, you. I, I'll throw you the keys. <laughs> All right. So, so you go grab the truck. No issues getting it or, or coming back. Well, while he's going and getting, <laughs> while he's going and getting it, what what else is everybody else doing? I'm gonna look around for anything that's worth scavenging or salvaging. In in the warehouse, or is everybody still outside the warehouse? Uh, I would start outside and work my way in. <laughs> yeah, because I don't think we'll get, we won't go in until everyone's right. here. Cause... Okay. So okay. it's it's a warehouse with a, like a couple guard towers and then basically a fence around the whole thing. There's not a lot, there's no more outbuildings or anything like that? Nope, uh, not other than the guard house, uh, no. I suppose uh, Doc would want to take a look around, maybe check the guard house first, but uh, he'd want to take a look and see if he could find any um, like untampered with medical supplies like any old first aid kits on the walls or anything like that okay um so you're doing that uh it's not like is everybody while well, while uh dr zarek is going and getting the the cards it's not like everybody's just gonna kind of look around outside to see what you can find uh correct yeah I'm, I'm gonna keep at my ear i'm gonna keep looking at the vent and keep an ear see if any of the noises change okay or just the sound of a generator all right, so so for those who are searching around, go ahead and give me a scavenge roll. Yeah, uh, Cooper, you you go and you you look, kind of put your ear to it. It's just a normal um, hum of 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 the generator. Okay. Um, so pass. No, that's okay. an eighty-five fail. Fail. Uh, Forty-five out of fifty. Hard okay. success, if that's a thing. Yep. Um, all right, so uh, Doc, you you start looking around. Um, you, uh, so, so I, again, this is the apocalypse. You, you're rarely going to find anything in a, in pristine condition. However, you know, I'll say that you, you do find in one of the guard towers, it was, it was kind of tucked, uh, in a cabinet that was in there. Um, it takes you a little bit to force the cabinet open, but you do find a first aid kit that's relatively good, um, 
good condition, meaning um, it's not, you know, completely molded out. You know, you find a couple band-aids and uh, first aid cream or, you know, antiseptic in there that's, uh, that appears to be usable. Um, Bill, you, you, uh, you succeeded, correct? Yeah. Okay. So you're, you're kind of searching around, not really finding anything until you get to one of the cars and you start. Uh, so there are a couple of military Jeeps that are there. Again, they are just completely right. rusted out. Um, but you start searching around and you do find, you do find a rusted out pistol in there, which is completely unusable, but you do find uh, another set of uh, ammo um, that, that you can use. Uh, and it, it, all of you should have a pistol. Um, and actually, this is a, a good time. Um, everybody give me a luck roll. Yeah. Yes. So if, if you passed, you have an extra set, uh, an extra clip of ammunition for your pistol. Nice. If you failed, you do not. The number of bullets you have on there is what you have. Uh, Bill, you find another clip for your pistol. Nice. Nice. I'm going to take the, I'm going to take the, that pistol too, because with some, if I come across some brake fluid or something, you know, we can get this all machine oiled out and maybe use the parts okay. or whatever. It's still going to be good. Okay. Uh, by this time, Dr. Zarek comes back. Uh, Cooper, you're, you're still over at the, uh, the, the vent uh, and something happens um, for, for everybody. Um, you're all just kind of searching around trying to figure out your next moves. The voice on the radio is you know, saying the numbers over and over again and then starts to cough again. Cough one of these kind of wet sickly coughs. And as she does, the lights all around you dim. And uh, Cooper, you can even hear the generator kind of like slow down. And then once she starts with uh, saying the numbers again, the lights come back up and the generator uh, starts to work again. Okay, that's oh. weird. Guys, Be guys, damn. guys, guys. That was weird. Is she guys. coughing in the same exact spot every time? No, no, it, it's random. Guys, I've just... Right, so when she was coughing, so not saying the numbers... The generator power was going so she is clearly has to keep saying this or all her light goes uh, all her light i think is... that's a little premature to say that I ridiculous it's weird. it's weird hey oh well i'm a crack for here okay, yeah and that's a crack for theory you know, they, and that's... They, we have to deal with reality but there used to be a thing called television and a show called Lost with a bunch of numbers. I don't, I don't think this is that. Something's wrong. Maybe she's got her hand on a switch. Matt, likely. Are we living in a? This is a, this is a world where shadows are coming. Out as anything could be possible. Who, there is a scientific look. explanation for everything. I, I tend to agree I, with Doctor Zerk. I don't know. Just tell me what to do. Well, we check in the warehouse now. We're yeah, all here. We, we check out all. We need to find the door. And if we don't find a door, down the vent we go. Oh, well, so, so like I said, in the warehouse, um, there are those kind of two or three, we'll say three army uniforms that are just kind of in random places. Um, and when I say that they're in random places, I mean, the whole uniform is there again, kind of like somebody had been in that uniform and then fell over and they're no longer there. Um, and uh, there's there's that uh, central kind of platform that's fenced around with that metal fence and the panel sitting there. Could that be some sort of a platform that uh, elevator? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. We'll take a look at it. Possibly. Okay. So, um, sorry, go on. I was going to say, see if there's like a control panel or anything that would reinforce that theory. <clears throat> okay. Um, so uh, I'm assuming you two uh, and whoever else follows you uh, start heading towards the platform. Uh, as you get closer, you do see that um, kind of, you know, where that on the inside of where that fence is on the floor, it does look like uh, there's uh, a line uh, in between the floor and, and the platform itself. Uh, you get closer and you look at the panel and you see that the panel has a bunch of uh, buttons. Uh, it has a kind of a, a, a key in it um, for an on off position. It's currently on on. 
Uh, and there are two buttons, one that says up and one that says down. Well, there's our answer. <laughs> up or down. Down we go. Well, shall we all, are we all together? Yep. What could possibly go wrong, gentlemen? Hey, well, <laughs> one of us could always go down the vent if you really wanted to. No, let's yeah, stick go for together. it. Hey, you know I would. You know I would. <laughs> there are too you many shadows in the vent. But then I can't lead you guys to a victory if I'm down <laughs> by myself, can I? Let's find the number, lady, and give her a cough drop or something. Okay. So, so everybody's going on the platform, correct? Yeah, even though I really want to go down the vent, I am going down the platform. Okay. Doc will step onto the platform, but he's also going to draw his pistol. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. So, 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 hand, hammer in the other. So you all step on the platform. It, it feels very solid. Um, it looks like it would probably be used to uh, to transfer probably some pretty heavy equipment. It, it's a, it has the ability to do that. Um, who's pressing the button? Oh, please. Oh. I pressed the button. <laughs> Doctor Zarek, everybody's kind of, kind of standing around staring at each other like you, not, not sure who's going to do it. And Dr. Zarek, screw it. You know. my, my mother used to sing a song. Life is short, life is shit, and soon it will be over. <laughs> So you, you press the button and the elevator kind of lurches uh, and slowly starts going down. Um, it, as it does, this loud klaxon horn goes uh, off uh, as you start to descend. Um, there, as you start to descend, um, there are kind of lights embedded into grooves in the, the hallway, or not the hallway, the, the elevator shaft. It, it, it's open around you. There's not a, like an elevator door or anything like that. Um, and so you start slowly going down. Um, there's a little speaker on the panel as well, and you can hear the voice coming through this speaker. Uh, you, you go down, and it, it goes down for, you know, a minute passes, and you're still going down. Um, the, the, the light above you, the little like square area that you can see the light from the warehouse is slowly starting to shrink. Uh, after about two minutes, um, it, it, it looks like you've probably gone down a good three or 400 feet into the depths of the ground. Your ears are even kind of, you know, equalizing it and popping a little bit. Um, but as you go down about two minutes, um, you start to see where the, as it goes down, there's, uh, an opening that, that starts to rise uh, and you get about halfway to that opening and the voice that's doing the numbers just starts to cough this, you know, wet, violent, sickly cough harder than she's done before. And the, as that happens, the lights dim, the elevator just kind of shakes to a halt. Uh, then almost immediately she starts uh, saying the numbers again. Uh, however, the, the elevator doesn't move anymore. There is a red light, a red error light blinking on the, the panel. Uh, just, you know, error, error, error. Uh, but at least the elevator has gone down far enough that you could, you see in front of you that there is a very, very bright hallway. Told you. The, well, it might not be true, but it's got to be connected, right? She coughs, stops saying the numbers, and the light and power goes off. Briefly. He has a point. What if she's not human? What if she's an AI? Then I'm you have sure. A sick AI. A what? She's a she's an AI controlling the facility. Well, that's crazy. Uh, I, I just, uh, I've read too much hey, science fiction as a child. You never know. The government are always doing crazy things. I didn't even realize that these nexus points and here we are probably in one of the nexus points that i heard in the grapevine so who knows there could be government androids out there they've probably been creating like mass production of killer robots for all i know who knows killer robots killer robots they'll yes, kill they release all the killer robots into the world and they go hey there's nobody to kill uh, all right let's climb down we gotta kind of climb down here don't we 
Yeah, so it, it you, you've got about a two foot drop or so. Um, so, you know, definitely enough that it's not gonna be too difficult for you to get off the this, this elevator platform. Um, so you get off and the first thing that you all see is that the light here is brighter than anything you have seen in a very, very long time yeah. to the point where everything is washed out that, that type of bright. Um, and in fact, from here on out, while, while you're in this kind of light, any like visual perception checks that you make, it's going to be at a minus 20%. Um, just because the light is so bright, it, it, it's, it, it's hard to see. Is it, um, where is it coming from? It's coming from everywhere. There, there are uh, lights all along. So you're in a hallway. There are lights all along the hallway, like every 10 feet on, on both sides of the hallway. The hallway itself is probably a good 10 feet wide, uh, and, but it's straight. It goes about 20 feet and then it, it ends. Um, well, it not ends, but uh, it stops at a uh, very like large circular nuclear blast door. Uh, for, for lack of a, a better term. Um, and you can see that the hallway kind of continues on beyond that. Uh, there are loudspeakers about every 20 feet or so, and the voice is just going there, you know, saying the, um, the, the, uh, the numbers over and over again. The one thing you do see is, first off, everybody give me a sanity check. Uh, well, that's, that's a file. So if you pass, so if you pass nothing, if you failed, lose one, um, because all over the floor, the doors, <laughs> the walls, the 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 on the hallway, everywhere you can see, are these numbers written in every place that you can see, and as she goes through the numbers, you see that she's saying this sequence of numbers, the same sequence of numbers that's written on the. Um, uh, uh, everywhere. Something. And actually, everybody give me, a, if you have an occult, if you have a cult, give me an occult roll. Something strange is going on here, boys. It's a fail. Did anybody succeed? No. no. Nope. Okay. It's just a lot of numbers. Man. Um, look, looking down the hallway, you can see that the hallway goes, um, well, probably about um, 100 feet. Uh, then it kind of makes, it looks like it kind of makes a 90 degree angle to the right. Uh, however, you do see that there is uh, about halfway down on the left side, uh, or I'm sorry, about halfway down on the right side, there is a door. There's a door. Yes, that's our next stop. Like just a regular, what kind of door is it? Is it a steel door? Is it an office style door? Uh, from I, I'm assuming that you guys are still kind of in the hallway, haven't yeah. entered past the the nuclear blast door yet. Um, on it, from what you can tell, it looks like a just kind of like a, a steel door. Okay. Again, it's kind of hard to see just because it is so incredibly bright here. I will approach it. I will walk up. Leading the way like usual. Okay. We all just stand in formation then, just following. Uh, yeah. Sounds good. Wait, wait. Uh, Doc, hold on. Now, before we just go in willy nilly, can we like listen at the door or can we try to yeah. uh, take a peek through the keyhole? Or, I mean, obviously yeah. that's not going to work, but. Yeah, listen at the door. See if you can hear anything oh, over we'll the, the woman. Door. I'll put my ear against it. So, so are you making this discussion before you get to the door, or are you kind of getting there and saying, yeah, wait? Yeah, as, yeah I, as we're getting to the door. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you uh, you get to, to the door. Um, Cooper, give me an alertness roll. I Actually, ev not. everybody give me an alertness roll. I yeah, said minus 20 to the roll in it, so... So, is, so it's minus 20% or is it minus 20 points? Uh, so take minus 20 from your skill. So if your skill is 80, it's now 60. Uh, okay. And this this, this will be a visual one, so it would count towards this. It is a fail. That's a fail. 99. Pass. Oh, 
Um, yeah. Okay. All right. So Dr. Zerk, you you passed. Um, Chris, you you rolled a ninety nine. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. That is a critical fail. So we'll talk about that in a second. Um, uh, Dr. Zarek, you, uh, so Cooper, you, you go up, you, you kind of put your ear to the door and you can't hear anything. Um, Dr. Zarek, one of the things that you do notice though, is there's, you know, just like doors, they have a gap underneath. Um, there's probably like maybe a half inch inch gap underneath. You actually see darkness under there. Um, you, you don't see light coming from, from inside this room. Mm -hmm. um, and Chris, as you are going there, you, um, you know, you're, you're trying to pay attention to everything. You're, you're probably, I guess, in, in the middle of everybody since Cooper is kind of leading it. And we'll say Dr. Zarek is, is right behind him. You, you kind of, you're, you're kind of not paying attention and you don't stop when any, everybody else stops. And so you kind of bump everybody and this kind of pushes Cooper into the door, um, kind of making this metal bang. Um, as this happens, um, you, uh, for a second there, you kind of hear this, uh, almost like bang echo that it kind of echoes through the hallway as everybody just immediately tenses up. Uh, and then from inside the other room, you hear, hello, it's not, it's a man's voice. Hello. Is, is somebody, is somebody there? Oh, lead leader, it's, it's yeah, dark yeah, under yeah. the door. Be uh, careful. Oh, uh, I'm a, I'm, I'm Cooper. Cooper, are, are, when did you get? Did you are, are you okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. What about you? You seem to be in the pitch black, my friend. Look, look, look. We're we're stuck in here. There's like like three or four of us in here, and you can at this point you can hear it shuffling, moving around. Uh, and they say, look, she's crazy. She locked us in here. She's trying to let more shadows in. You need to let us out. Zarek, Zarek, I whispered to Zarek. Zarek, can shadows imitate people? Do you know? I don't know for sure, but they, they take over the person. So, yes. Yes. Is, that, is this the only door of it over doors? uh in this are you asking me or yeah in this asking you yeah. so uh you this is the only door uh in this hallway but again kind of farther down you do see that the hallway jogs uh at 90 degree angle to the right Fuck. what do what do we do what do we do guys i we i whispered the river. what do we do hello are, are you still there <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm here mate i'm here i'm here i've i've got a, Oh, there's a doctor with me. Who, who well. is she? She is Lisa. L Lisa Parsons. She's. She, you can't hear her. Can, can you hear her? Can you hear the number? Yeah. The, her saying the numbers over and over again. Yes. What's what, the numbers? What happened? I I don't know. Listen, I I don't know what the numbers are. Uh, all I know is she's gone crazy. She's what locked happened? herself in a room and locked us in here. You need to let us out, and and we'll we'll get out of here. We'll help you. We'll do whatever we can. What happened? I, we, th th this is kind of our, it, it's a bunk room. You know, we were sleeping here at night and then she just locked us in. We, we woke up and she, you know, she had killed the lights and she had um, locked us in. We can't get out. And, and as he says that she's, she locked us in, you can look down and you see that there is a, uh, the, the door handle is, uh, it's got like a, a red button and a, or not button, a red light and a green light. The red light is on. It looks like it's an electronic lock. How do we know you're not one of them? The shadows. What? We're, I, we're not. But you're I can guarantee we're not. We can't, we've got light out here. We, you're in the pitch black. How do we not, how do we know that you're not how, how do I know that you're not one of the shadows? We're standing in the brilliant light. Yeah. I wouldn't um, be here in the bright light then, would I? Sunshine. Uh, oh. Confer with the others. Um, what do you think if we open the door and their shadows, aren't they going to be damaged by the light? True. Chased away? I think opening the door for strangers yeah. is going to put us at risk. It's really bright light as well, so it, the risk should fairly be met mitigated. If they yeah, are, they wouldn't even be able to step into the hallway. All of you yeah. stand back. 
and I'll open it then, if that's what you want to do. Because they might be scientists who work here that can tell us what the fuck is going on. Or yeah. they might be soldiers. There's... But We know. Anyway. Right, I'm the... going to... Oh, go ahead, Doc. Go ahead. Uh, do, do we know if the if the light just keeps them from traveling or if it actually damages them when they're when they're in any light at all because like i mean in order for a shadow like... to be there and exist there has to be some light. right so you do i you know you've all kind of been through this uh, apocalypse long enough you you do know that the light does hurt the 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 shadows the, the shadows are you know are when you so you've all had some type of experience with them um and so you you you've seen this type of thing happen this the shadows they they look like shadows they, um you know they it's not like there's a like, and when i say that you 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 haven't seen like a shadow being it's literally like somebody has a second shadow right um, but but you do know that if they they get like very bright light pointed at them it does hurt them so it's i like think alan that's wake. What, it's the, like the game alan wake the yeah. the the, uh, the entire hallway is filled with light so that we don't actually cast any direct shadows our shadows are filled with light i think let them out but if they then in turn tell us to come inside then don't believe them yeah you you guys you guys step back just in case i know we're in the light but you can't be everybody's tell them we are armed we are armed right Right. we are armed but we are going to let you out we're going to let you out do not this is on trust that I am letting you out here, and I press the button. <laughs> you it, you you press it and nothing happens. It, it's not a button. It's it's more of just a light that indicates locked or unlocked. Oh, you, you try you try the door handle, nothing happens. And as you kind of start shaking it, you hear the voice on the other side that says, "No, no, look, you you can't unlock it from here. There, the, down the hall is a a central kind of like control room. You have to go in there and unlock it." Well, you could have told me that instead of letting me look like a fucking idiot. Well, look, look, I'm uh, we're the ones who's who are, are trapped in here. You know, look, you you need to let us out. We we need to get out of here. Don't don't get don't get too angry with me, mate, or I won't let you out. All right. Well, maybe some of us should go forward to the control room, and some of us stay here. I don't know. Yep. I think that's right. I think that me, I should stay here. I've got a hammer and a gun. And uh, uh, probably Cooper. I'll stay. I'll, I'll, no, Cooper, we need Cooper. He's our survivalist. Uh, I'll stay here with you, Bill. Okay. I'll take, I'll take Chris and Doc and we'll check ahead. Yeah. yeah. Sounds All good. Right. So, so those who are, are going forward, uh, start start moving forward. Um, the the two that are staying there, um, what are you doing? You're just kind of. I'm I'm going to question them some more. What what do you know? What these numbers are that she's saying? She said, uh, they say uh, the the man's voice says no. I, I don't know what what they are. She just you know started saying them uh, at at some point after she locked us in. I I don't know what it is. What were you working on before all of this began? Uh, we we were remnants of the Nexus or the, uh, of Project Aberdeen. Uh, we after after the world went to hell, we we stayed here. Right. So we tried to survive. Some of us have gone forward to try and open the door. Keeper, what yes. I'm going to do is I am going to. As precautionary measure, I don't want that door. I don't want. Does the door swing out or swing in? Swing in. Swing in. Okay, then as then that's a little bit of a different thing. So I'm going to put my hand on the door and I'm going to be holding it for when it buzzes open. Because what I don't want it to happen is for it to buzz open and have them fling the door wide open. I want to see. Okay. I want to be able to control that process as it as they open it, or at least fight back against them. Okay. I'm gonna have the hammer. I'm gonna have the hammer ready. Okay. Um, so uh, you you two are, are there. The the rest of you um, start moving down the hallway. 
you kind of get and, and the one I, I, I can't remember if I mentioned this or not, but you do see vents up towards the top of the hallway. The, the, the hallway is probably maybe nine, 10 feet high. Um, and there are vents every so often. Um, the vents are, are probably, I don't know, maybe like three feet wide by two feet tall. They're, they're pretty big. And as you pass them, you do feel cool air being blown out of it, uh, kind of circulating the air. Uh, but the the other three of you, as you're you're moving forward, you kind of get to that uh, turn. Um, you turn and look down the hallway, the uh, and you see that the hallway goes down a good uh, another 150, 200 feet. Um, about halfway down is another hallway that juts off to the left, uh, but the the hallway that you've currently walked into continues on. Uh, and you can see that it ends, uh, but you can't see what, what's beyond it because it looks like uh, the ceiling has caved in right there. Um, there it, it looks like it definitely has gone on, but you, you just can't get past whatever is there. Um, what, what are you going to do? So it does go down and there is another hallway that you can go, go down. Straight ahead or drawing the hallway, what do you think? Doc, you're a sensible person. What do you think? Well, I figure we've gone this far. Might as well keep going. I mean, clearly can't go through the rubble. And unless uh, any of y'all feel like crawling through some air vents, I think that way is off limits for now. Straight ahead then, Doc. Okay. Yeah, why not? And I'll lead the way just as usual. Chris, right. you, you keep the back. Keep, keep Doc in the middle. Roger. Okay. So uh, you start going, you turn the corner into the, the next hallway. Cooper, give me a dodge roll. Oh, oh, shit. That's a fail. So the other two. Uh, you, oh, shit. That's a you, 77. So that's a crit fail. Oh, yeah. So um, oof. Um, yeah, I can double check that. I thought it was a one, but no, it's a seven. <laughs> so you, um, uh, so Doc and, and Chris, you turn the hallway, you turn down the hallway, or you see Cooper turn down the hallway, and then he just goes down, falls down. Uh, Cooper, you fall down hard. You weren't expecting something to, to be on, on the ground. You trip over something. Uh, you take uh, two points of damage uh, as you hit the ground hard. Uh, the other, uh, it, you turn around to see what did I just trip over, and the the, uh, the other two of you, you know, turn uh, turn around and look to see as, as well to see what happened. All three of you, give me a sanity check. Oh what the fuck, fuck, man, that was a fucking uh, tripping and off. That's pass. A fuck off. That's that an extreme that's pass an, an if that applies to sanity rolls. Eighty-eight. Fucking eighty-eight. <laughs> <laughs> Cooper is not doing good. <laughs> Um, so, uh, those, if you guys, for those of you who passed, you lose one, uh, Cooper, you, uh, because you failed, you would normally lose a D four, but since you did a critical fail, you lose four points of sanity. Um, you turn around and you look and you see a man, uh, a dead man lying on the ground. Um, normally that wouldn't, you know, freak you out as much except his, all of his, uh, so he is wearing an army uniform. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you that. Um, but all of his visible skin has numbers carved into it. And and the oh. numbers do continue on the hallway in, in this way. Oh, fuck off. Oh, fuck, fuck this shit. What the fuck? Uh, Dr. Zarek and Bill, you do hear kind of uh, Cooper kind of shout out in, in uh, surprise slash horror. Uh, it, it echoes down the hallway. Are you all right down there? Yeah, just uh, just found a, no, found something a little surprising. We'll uh, explain when we get back. Really did a number on him. Okay, yes, they cool. did. Yes, they did. Jesus, uh, I ain't never seen nothing like that. Is uh, is the corpse like bloated or does it look fresh or? It looks um. It looks fairly fresh. I mean, do you have medicine or, or forensics? No, I don't. Uh, no um, forensics either. Yeah. Uh, 
Doc, you yeah. you've got medicine, right? Yeah, he would he would definitely kneel down and take take a closer look. So so the body's cold. Um, it, it has not really decomposed that much. Um, the rigor mortis has definitely set in. So if you had to guess based off of you know you being a, a doctor or at least having some medical training, um, it probably was um, uh, you know maybe a week old. The body's maybe a week old. Um, the, 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 the numbers on him, um, it, there's evidence that there had been bleeding when they were cut in. Um, so it looks like, uh, he was alive when that happened and, and it, they're just all over his body. In fact, you even kind of lift up his shirt a little bit and you can see that all of his skin is covered in these numbers. Uh, kind of death by a thousand cuts. You ever seen something like this before doc? No, I'm, this is madness. I've I've never seen anything like this. Uh, I guess we move him out of the way and keep going, or should we search him? Yeah, I think uh, give him a good search over, and then uh, just keep going. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll rifle through his pockets then. You you don't really find you know anything of use. You do find uh, on his um, uh, his uniform. It does uh, say. Sergeant uh, Johnson, um, you do find like a, on his dog tags, uh, his name is Paul Johnson from Arkham, Massachusetts. I think the dog tag state where you're from. I could be wrong though. Um, looking down the hallway, you do see that uh, this hallway does go down about another 200 feet. Um, about a third of the way down on the left hand side is a door. Uh, another third of the way down on the right hand side is another door and at the end uh, it the um, the uh, the hallway ends in a very large metal door and this this large metal door when, when I say that I, I it looks almost like a safe door like like a safe in a bank like one of those vault doors I guess is, is more specific mm -hmm. It's kind of like a big bomb shelter door, kind of like. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that would be a good description of it. Okay. Cooper, well, you all right? Yeah, I'm all good. I'm all good. I'm composed now. I'm composed. Fuck you know. Yeah, help uh, Cooper to his fate, and then I guess we start with the first doors. We don't want anything nasty sneaking up behind us. You think we should uh, call for reinforcements? I think we'll be we'll be we'll be fine. We'll be fine. If it gets worse, we call for reinforcements. They they could hear they could hear me shouting. So it's not like yeah, the we further we go, go. It's, the, ah! it's the longer they have to run to get to us, though. But after you, Coop. Well, I'll take the first door. Then. All right. So you walk down to the first door. It's open. Um, before you guys turn in, uh, Dr. Zerk and Bill, uh, you, you're still kind of standing there. It's um, taking them so long. It's like I, a, This is not how, inspiring confidence. How far down is this control room, gentlemen? Uh, it's it's just our, you know down and, and around the corner. It shouldn't it, it shouldn't take you know very long to get there. You know what, what's going on? Why are they letting us out? They need to let us out. So, let me ask you a question. She went crazy. And locked you in here, right? Yes. How long ago did this happen? Uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's hard to say. You know, a couple days maybe. I it, I don't know. How many of you are there in there? Uh, there's uh, three of us. And did you know she was going crazy beforehand? What led up to this? Uh, you know, she's she she was acting you know normal. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a psychologist. I, I don't know what, you know, who is she? Uh, her, her name's, you know, Lisa Parsons. She was one of the technicians here like us. Are you guys military? Yes. So she's just another soldier like you. What was she working on? Was she working on something different than what you were working on? No, we were all working on Project <laughs> Aberdeen. And what is Project Aberdeen? You know, I, to be honest with you, I, I couldn't tell you. I was just kind of a low level grunt that did what I said or what I was told. I, I know it was not good though. Um, What's the deal with the numbers? Do you have any idea what that shit is? 
No, but I, you need to, you, you need, and the, the, the voice kind of pauses for a second and you can, you can tell that it's kind of struggling uh, and um, says you, you need to have th those stop. You know, I, I don't care if you have to you know, break off the loudspeakers, you need to have the number stop. Well, Whatever direction? she's doing with it, 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 it's causing all of this. Which direction, left to right, is the control room? The Go, to, go down the hallway, it's going to be on your left. Uh, Bill, stay here for a moment. I, I don't know where the others went. Yep, to. yep. yep. So I'm so just you, going to go down to the end and then look left. And so, so you you go down. Um, well, so you go down to the end of the hallway. The hallway turns right, and you look down. That's where you see the debris at the far end, and then the the other hallway kind of juts off to the left, and that, that's all you can see. But at the end of this hallway, it's not doesn't turn left; it turns right. No, it, no. I, so let me. I'm not good at describing these types of things. Let oh, well, me... I'm just trying to see if they don't know what they're talking about. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. <laughs> so let me do this. Uh, okay. Here is the uh, nuclear bunker door. Um, right here is the the door to where you all, you know, heard uh, are hearing the people on the right. other side. The hallway goes down, makes a right, um, and down here, this is where all the debris is. Okay. Um, this hallway right here, because the others have just have seen it, there is a door right here, door right here, and then a door here. Okay. Where are the others at this point? They have just went into the first door in okay. that hallway. That so one. they're there. <laughs> yes. All right. But but you're you're standing like right here in this corner. Right. You can't right. see. All right. Uh, I'll I'll yell though in their direction. Have you found the the control room yet? So the the rest of you, uh, as you're stepping into that room, you hear Doctor Zarek kind of yell out uh, that. And the room you enter in, uh, if you had to call something a control room, you would definitely call this a control room. It's filled with a number of computers, um, camera displays. Uh, that are kind of uh, with little TVs uh, associated with them from various uh, kind of places around the base in the warehouse. And um, on the, so you, you walked in, um, in the direction of kind of the end of the hallway. So as you walk in, it'd be to your right, that the whole kind of upper half of that um, wall is just a sheet of metal that if you had to guess, it's probably some type of viewport into whatever is beyond there. Uh, but you hear, Do as you step into there, you hear Dr. Zarek yell out for you. Uh, <clears throat> Doc would uh, lean back out the hallway and call out, jackpot. They found it. And I'll walk back to uh, Dr. To, to, to Big Bill. I guess they found it. It's taking them long enough. Good. So we're going to get ready again with our. So you guns. kind of you know back up the 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 man on the other side, you know he's just constantly you know saying you know I you, you need to let us out you need to let us out and they even he even starts like kind of like banging on the door what's taking so long what's taking so long you need to let us hey, out relax so, relax geez hey you guys got food in there no that's part of the problem we've been in here without food and water for i, I don't know how many days yeah, it's rough yeah it is rough um and all right, so we'll cut over to the other group you, you guys walk into this room um what 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 do you do doc doc I just had a thought as I was walking in here was that we've only heard one person speak. And he says there's three, but I, he says there's three or four of them in there. I, I can't remember what he said to us. Shout to Zarek. Ask him to get others to speak. Good idea, Cooper. Good idea, good idea. I'm not. Doc will step back out into the hallway and shout down. Hey, y'all. Make them confirm the people in there. Have them all say something. Yes, uh, 
everybody, I, I need to hear everybody's voice inside. The, the, the rest of them are sleeping. Uh, really? Well, on this momentous occasion, when they're about to be freed from their prison, you, you could wake them up and tell them the good news. With all the yelling, they haven't woken up. The, the, give me an insight roll. <clears throat> but both of you can. Insight. Ah, I just missed it. Uh, I also just missed it. I got 32 out of 30. Um, you know, he's he's kind of dancing around the subject. You, you can't quite tell whether or not he, he's just like right. lying or he's just kind of so upset that he just doesn't want to bother getting the others. Mm, I don't believe him. What's your name? Uh, my name's uh, George. George L what? L Lieutenant George Kennedy. I don't know why Bill suddenly reacted when you said that, but uh, <laughs> um, and uh, where are you from, George? What, what does this all matter? You need to go and get us out. You know, do it. Just go and I don't know what what's delaying the other. Just go and have them let us out. All right, go ahead. Awfully good at giving orders. Bill, I think that let's just go. Doc would call. He confirm it yet? Yeah. If he doesn't, if he, if he we have call. some questions that do not give us answers that we are comfortable with. Hmm. With that, Doc could head back in control. Don't don't press anything quite yet. Yeah, we oh, didn't oh, we didn't make oh. it this far by being fools. Let's see if we can figure out what the hell's going on here first. I'm gonna check the room that I've just, we've just entered. Okay. I'll I'll tell Chris to because while Doc was checking with them, I'd have got Chris and been like, okay. "You check the computers and that." So the or and I'll check the like for documents and stuff. There's, um, you know, a, a number of uh, computers there. Uh, all of them are on. Um, surprisingly, they're all un unlocked. Um, but, you know, they, they seem to be kind of, I, I guess, you know, what do you, what do you want to do with them? Doesn't, doesn't Chris know all about the computers? Yeah, that's why I told him to check the computers <laughs> and not me. Um, I guess if they're unlocked, I'd be looking for like public desktop files to see if there's anything outstanding on like immediately that catches the eye on the desktop. Okay. Um, so you give me, give me a technology use rule. And I'm looking for like any paper documents or anything around the room. If there's okay. Anything like that. Uh, uh, actually, that's, a, that's a pass. Okay, perfect. Um, so you you're looking around the computers. Um, th there's there's a lot of documents. Most of these are most of the documents that you're finding are kind of military like documents that requisition forms, kind of, you know stuff that is dated, best you can tell, you know over five years ago. Um, it looks like this facility, uh, this uh, Project Aberdeen facility number 14B. Uh, was created uh, or built you know, between five to seven years ago. Uh, definitely, uh, obviously, you know, a, a couple years before the apocalypse happened. Um, you see uh, references to other uh, Project Aberdeen bases. Uh, it looks like there were a total of 17 uh, based all around the country. Um, you do see that uh, there's a mention uh, occasionally of... Um, something about them being at nexus points uh but there's no ever there's never any description of what a nexus point is mm -hmm. um so cooper you are kind of looking around uh the room just looking through paperwork and that and you, and you do find some paper paperwork again a lot of it is you know nothing that's really kind of gives you any information, but you do find um, in the in you know, this being a control room, there's there's desks, there's there's cabinets and, and things like that. You do find in one that there is uh, you open a cabinet and it looks like it's um, there's a, a whole rack of DVDs that um, are labeled uh, ob observatory. Uh, each of them appear to have a date on them. 
uh, going back uh, a number of years. The latest would be, actually give me an int times five check. 30, 30 on 70, so. The latest date, as far as you can remember, was the day the apocalypse happened, that everyone saw that fl bright flash in the sky. Um, I'm a, is there anything I can use them on, I'm assuming? Oh yeah, the, the computers have DVD cool, players cool, cool. in it. So, so, what did you find? As I go to put the DVD in one of the... Well, uh, Doc and Cope, this confirms your crackpot theories, as you so call them. <laughs> um, this is one of 17 facilities. They're nexus points. This one is 14B, Project Aberdeen. So, you were bang on the nail with that one. All right. They're all they're located all over the country. Not this. This isn't the only one. See, I, I knew Colin would came in for me when he told me about them many years ago. I knew he was correct. He's a bit crazy, Colin is, but he knows. Got a DVD there. Yeah, Doc. Get in here. Make sure you're. <clears throat> Doc right. is yeah. Doc comes back into the room. He's they're they're Good. coming. All right. Coming. So we'll the, wait for them then before I put it in. Okay. So so Doctor Zerk and Bill, you guys are, are heading down towards the the control room. Is that correct? Yeah, I think so. Sure. Okay. Yep. So as you're heading away, you can hear that the the man, uh, the lieutenant, just start banging on the door as you're walking away, saying, "Don't don't come back. You you guys need whatever you're doing. You need to you know, get this." Uh, door unlocked and you just kind of hear him banging more and more uh violently on the door um you start you you go to the end of the hallway you're in you make a right you go down and you make a left uh into the the final hallway and give me a sanity check because they just kind of moved that body to the side uh, 19. so if you pass one if you fail to a d4 all right i only got one I have done very well on my sanity checks tonight. Okay. Yep, so far, so good. I just jinxed myself. <laughs> oh, uh, look, so, he's got numbers carved into his skin. So you, you, um, you know, after your initial shock of that, you continue down uh, into the hallway, and uh, the three, the rest of you, uh, Cooper, Doc, and uh, Chris, you see the final two kind of appear into the room. Jesus, you Joseph, what the hell went on in this place? Get in there now. Get in here, quick. I found this... a DVD that dates the day that this apocalypse started. And also, I'll, my mate Colin was correct. This is a nexus point. They exist. There's like 17 of them. Well, I apologize because you turned out to be right this time. Well, then it it might... I I, I I've assumed that there were places where these shadows things originated and that they spread from there this could be one of them well let's watch this video let's watch this dvd then i slip it in press play so the the, the dvd um it, it takes a second to spin up and then the uh, a little kind of movie appears. The, the movie is in black and white. Um, when you kind of compare it to the other TVs uh, that are in here, which you uh, haven't really looked at yet, which because I haven't described them, um, it, it looks like they were, it's a, a film from uh, one of these uh, security cameras. Um, it's pointed in a very large circular room, which you don't, uh, you, which you haven't seen yet, obviously. Um, there are... Uh, uh, actually, it shows two rooms. One is the, the control room that you're in. Uh, the other is this, this other kind of circular room. In the control room, you see um, a number of people uh, at, very, at the computers. Uh, you see uh, probably three or four people there, uh, including um, one you see is a woman. Um, there is, uh, they're, they're pressing buttons. They're, they're kind of working through, uh, through things. Um, in the other room, you see that uh, there are three or four people uh, in this very large room. Uh, it's kind of messing with this control panel uh, in, in front uh, of uh, in front of them. Um, they're, they're they're pressing buttons. You can't really tell what they're doing. You do notice, though, on the floor of the um, 
uh, of the, uh, the the room that they're in uh, is uh, carved into the floor uh, is a pentacle uh, with um, kind of like it, it's uh, uh, surrounded by this the circle of what what best could be described as you know some type of runes um, that that uh, none of you recognize. Hmm, that's um, shitty good. That looks like witchcraft. Uh, after uh, about a minute or two, um, you know, of, of everybody kind of fooling around, um, you see uh, on one of the computer screens in the control room a countdown that goes from 10, 9, 8. Uh, when, when it hits 1, um, the, there, uh, you can see in the, um, in the large uh, set, uh, circular room, there is a huge flash of light. Um, everybody is just kind of what, and the, the cameras go out for a second because of that flash of light. Uh, when it comes back, uh, you can see that the, the two people that were in there, their eyes are, they're, they're covering their eyes, but, and there's no sound of this, uh, but there's, uh, it almost looks like they're screaming. Um, in the center of the room, kind of right above that kind of pentacle that's drawn into the, uh, the ground, you can see what can best be described as the air splitting open and this black void appearing. And from this black void, you can see all of these shadows streaming out. Um, within seconds, the, the shadows uh, uh, kind of overwhelm the, the two men that are there uh, and they just disintegrate in front of your eyes in, into ash. Um, on the, um, uh, in the control room, as this happens, you can see the woman, she kind of immediately jumps up, hits a button, and there is a, uh, uh, the metal panel in front of the, the room slams down, uh, that, the same metal panel that you see on the wall. It appears that it's like some observation into that other room. Uh, and she goes and tries to hit another button, uh, and there's some like flashing lights that go on, and then the camera cuts out. Um, everybody give me a sanity check. getting good rolls. So if, if you made the sanity uh, check, it's one. If you lose it, it's a D6. Oh, no. Six. So if you get like a... If you get I'm a really unlucky. I just brought a six. <laughs> Fuck. I, I took two points of sanity damage. Uh, sorry, Doc, what were you saying? I was just curious, like, so you said that rolling doubles is either a crit failure or a crit success. So if I get a crit success on a Sandy roll, is it, it, it's still just oh, the shit. one? Yeah, it's still the one. Okay. Oh, shit. I just rolled a 77. I got a crit fail. All right. So you lose six as well. Um, <laughs> oh, goddamn. So, so Cooper and uh, Bill, um, you you both, this, this uh, kind of causes, uh, so first off, did either of you hit your breaking point? Yeah. I am very close. <laughs> yep. You, Bill, you hit your breaking point. No. Oh, okay. All right. So, but you, but you, you lost six. So, um, yeah. you, you both just, uh, your mind just kind of goes, um, goes out. Um, a Cooper. All right. So first, the first thing that happens, um, kind of mechanically within the system, uh, you both lose one of your motivations, and it will be replaced with a uh, kind of like a mental phobia uh, or something like that. But we'll 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 kind of talk through that uh, later on. Um, let's see, Cooper, you're the one who put the DVD in. <clears throat> you immediately rip it out um, and break it in half, and then for the next, we'll say, three minutes. You are just trying to destroy everything in this room. Um, Bill, um, the, the same thing kind of happens to you. Uh, th this is just so overwhelming to you. But the thing that you keep focusing on is that those numbers, the, the woman saying those numbers over and over again. And you just start to rip off, uh, you know, or try to rip off all of the, um, the, the speakers, every speaker that you can find. Uh, to try to get it to shut up. Uh, so, so as this happens, what is everybody else doing? Just start smashing shit with my hammer. Can we try to restrain them? 
You can, so you can either try to restrain, the, restrain them. That would be kind of an opposed strength roll. Um, or uh, you, there is also reassure, which can try to, uh, it's kind of like the psychology of the system. You can try to kind of talk them down a little bit. No. I suppose strength would be better. I'm going to try to keep Cooper from destroying the machines because we still might be able to learn something or fix something. Okay. Of course, I can't do the same with Bell. I got an 04. So what were you trying to do? Were you trying to do reassure? Or... I'm tr no, I'm trying to restrain him. Okay. Uh, Cooper, go ahead and make a strength roll as well. Strength times five. Uh, that is 70. Right, I'm so a a fail. 75, so, but that's failing. Also. So that was a fail or a success? That, uh, to, by my strength, that's a success because I have 75 in strength. So. so this system is a little bit odd in that so you, you both had successes. Um, neither were a critical success. So you then compare the roles and it's actually the higher of the two roles which succeeds. So Cooper, oh. you actually succeeded in this case. Um, hmm. so, so Dr. Jarek, you go and you try to grab onto him. Um, but Cooper, you just, yeah, you kind of throw him back. You are just, um, what are you, what are you doing? You know, you, you kind of throw him back the, uh, how are you, what are you destroying? What are you, how are you I'll destroying? Probably it? try to flip a desk or something. Okay. Yeah. You, you absolutely, you know, you grab one of the desks, ah. you, you grab one of the desks, you, you flip it. Uh, and, um, you know, the computer that was on, it just kind of goes flying down. Um, what, uh, Chris and Doc, what are you guys doing? Um, <clears throat> Doc would uh, try to get over by Bill and start to, I guess, try and calm him down. Just uh, okay. so, uh, then he can accomplish nothing. Just trying to reassure him that uh, Bitch needs to get the fuck up. Stop that, with the that, numbers. That, that definitely try and get her to stop. That that sounds like a reassure roll. Go ahead and make that. That's a, that's a pass. So twenty-five awesome. and fifty. So, so Bill, you know, Doc, Doc kind of grabs you by by the shoulders. Like, look, this is not going to accomplish anything. You need to, you need to calm down. And you know, you you still you're kind of on. You're definitely on edge. Um, you know, you're you're kind of you you almost feel like your skin crawl with every number that this woman says. But you kind of calm down a, a little bit. Um, Chris, what are you doing? Uh, I will try to convince Cooper to chill out uh, if I can roll a reassure roll. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yes, that's a 19. That's a pass. Okay. Um, how, how are you? What are you saying to him? Um, I'll just say, like, this isn't going to change anything. Like, don't destroy the equipment. We, we need this. We, we could scavenge this. Like, trying to think of, like, the long run if we get out of here. Uh, and you know, Cooper, this uh, you you again you you're you're still kind of on edge too. Um, you um, you you can kind of feel uh, feel it. Uh, you know, just kind of grating at you. Something is grating at you. All this technology, uh, and you you take one last um, like monitor uh, and you grab it and you just throw it against the wall, and then you just kind of s sit back, kind of glaring at all the technology. Fuck you, technology. Fuck you. So, so what are you all uh, doing at this point then? Well, I'm the, trying to recover. <laughs> so I'll, I'll say that there, there's still uh, a couple. Uh, there's still control panels in there. That there's the cameras. Um, you, as you all kind of you know look around, uh, you also see that. Uh, it looks like, you know, uh, there's like um, microphones, I, I guess, and, and speakers on some of the control panels. Um, in the video, we seen her press a button that brought that shutter down. Mm -hmm. we, we should maybe have a look to see if there's anything left behind it. What do you think? Are there cameras that go behind it? The uh, glancing at the screens quickly. So, so you, uh, I'll say that you, you all kind of glance at the screens quickly. That would make sense. Um, what you see briefly, and if you all start 
tell me if you're going to kind of be studying one of these cameras. Yeah. Um, you, you see one um, that is uh, into uh, the one, there's a couple into the hallway. There's a couple at the warehouse. You're not seeing anything there that other than what you've already seen. Um, you see one that points to a, a room with a generator in it. You see one that uh, does point into that room that uh, all this stuff happened in. One points to the room that you're in now. And then you see one uh, pointing into another room with um, what looks like a woman sitting at a radio console with her back to you. Uh, and in, e in each case, the cameras kind of pan one way and then pan the other way. You also see one room where it's completely black. Just about to ask about that. Probably mm. the one where those people are. Really yeah. Is. Can we see in the, the? Is there a camera looking into the room on the other side of the panel? That uh, do we yes. see looking in there? Yes. Uh, so you you go and you look at that. Um, you see. Um, uh, sorry, I lost my place here. Uh, so you, you see that the um, it's very similar to to what you saw before. Um, you, uh, however, it's the, the, the issue is you can't really make things out because it's very staticky. That th this feed is very staticky. Every once in a while, it clears up and you can kind of see that room uh, or a portion of the room as the camera pans back and forth. It's obviously still getting electricity. Um, and then it's, uh, it goes back to static. Well, where, can we figure out from the monitors where the woman is? Um, so, yes. E so each of the rooms, uh, the well, let me let me see here. Um, well, through process of elimination, you could guess that uh, it's either in the in an area beyond the debris or in that uh, other door that's uh, down the hallway or one of the other two doors, I guess, that, that's down the hallway. You're not sure which is which. <clears throat> Fortunately, they're not labeled. If this is the control room, is there a way to, to see if we can shut the goddamn numbers up? We can stop her from reciting the numbers or at least block it from here to turn the speakers off or something? Do you want to do it or do you want to see if there's a way that you can I, do I it? I want to see if we can do it first. I'm not going to touch anything. Give, give me a technology use roll. Zero three. Yep, you you find you. Uh, so there's not like there's a button that says mute or anything like that. Um, you do find though that there is a um, electronic panel that if you were to sever the connection of that electronic panel, um, it would kill the loudspeakers. Now, you don't know if you do that, if you can um, uh, like turn it back on. You, you would literally be kind of breaking that circuit. And so in order to turn it back on, if you needed to, you would have to actually uh, probably repair it. I will inform everybody else of this and get what the consensus is. I'd really love her to shut up, but also I'm afraid that it might cut all the power to the pace. I don't think that we know what's going on. Uh, let's go find her. Yeah, we, we can't Real shut quick. Is we there can't a, shut Is there a way to turn the lights on in that pitch black room? You don't see a way to do that, no. Hmm. And Zarek, I'm sorry for pushing you over. Oh. I lost my mind a bit. Uh, it's like that time we all got drunk on the beer that I made because there was so much alcohol, it was like 9%. Don't worry about it. Um, okay, okay. Let's find so, this woman. So everybody give me an in times five roll. In, in times oh, yeah. five in, in this system is kind of like the idea eleven. Role. I got an 11, so... Critical success. I got a 66 out of 90. So that's oh, so that's still a critical success. success. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I got a fail. Okay. Pass. And Bill? I, I passed. Awesome. So for those of you who passed, you, so the, those of you who passed, 
Um, you do see that uh, in the the camera feed to her, uh, you kind of glance up really fast trying to figure out where that door is. Um, in the, the camera feed to her, you do see that there's a computer terminal right next to her on, on the screen. Um, those of you who got a critical success, uh, you do also see speakers on the, uh, on the panel next to her. Uh, and with the microphones there, you think you might be able to communicate back and forth to her. Why don't we do that? Uh, yeah, I'd be, I'd be game for that. Who, who wants to talk? Who's, who's the most, who's got the most character? We all have character. The, the hardships build character. We've had a great <laughs> many hardships. Well, I'm just going to tell her to shut the fuck up so somebody else might want to do it. Yeah. Uh, doc, doc can talk to her. I, I can talk to her. I can, uh, I've, I've had to deliver bad news and all that fun stuff over the years. And we'll leave it to you then, Doc. Yeah, um, real quick though, could we uh, maybe have one of you guys go uh, post up with a gun right outside that door across the hall in case she books it? I figure she's in there. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah I'll say kind of the same plan we had with the, the darkened room. Would yeah, she have consistent. to? I, if she did make a run for it, would she have to go by the door that we're at? Yes, yes. So. We can just stand in the hall outside the door and she can't get past us. Correct. Yeah, okay. So we don't have to go far. We'll just stand here at the door. Okay. Yeah. I'll stay next to Doc. So. All right. Um, do do I need to make a roll to like turn on the, the internet? No, no, you just kind of press a button and you, you can talk. Um, okay, Doc, I'll press a button. Uh, hey there, uh, Hey there, darling. How are you doing? And as soon as you say that, you can kind of see her jump a little bit and in, in, startled. Um, she, uh, uh, as she does, she kind of skips the, the kind of, you know, skips the numbers that she was saying. And you, um, the, the light uh, and the power in the room just briefly dims for a second. And then she starts back up again and it starts again. Um, and it, you look in the camera and you can see her kind of turn around and look at you. Uh, in or not look at you well it kind of feels like she's looking at you um, but she's looking into the camera and she's got those numbers carved into her face as well uh, in fact all of her visible skin uh, she has those numbers carved in um, she, uh, she she doesn't respond she just keeps saying the numbers and she kind of points uh, or she kind of leans over and types on the keyboard and on a screen in front of you uh, the the the, the yeah, kind of this message bubble appears up like an instant message bubble appears up coming from a Lisa Parson that says can't talk can't stop saying numbers but can type okay okay well I'll talk you type then all right okay. yeah I'll type yeah I'm, I can do that and you can see her type okay all right so uh Seems like something funny happens every time you uh, you cough or um, stop saying those numbers. Like the power's gonna go out if uh, if you stop. Do the lights turn off? She responds yes. Hmm. She says uh, she types in keeping the generator running. Her numbers are keeping the generator running. That's an awfully odd way to fuel a generator. Um, Let's get how it works. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ask her what happened. To see if she. What uh, what what happened? Why why do you need to keep? Why do you need to fuel the generator with numbers? What uh, what what cause these? What caused this current reality we find ourselves in? She types. Uh, numbers keep the generator running keeps the lights on, keeps the shadows uh, in in the Nexus room. And then she pauses for a second. Uh, again, you know, just constantly saying the numbers. Uh, and then uh, she says, Nexus room is where the shadows came from. What Was happens it... if you fall asleep? Haven't slept in days. 
I fall asleep, lights go out. At that point, she starts coughing again, kind of violently. Uh, and again, as every time before, as she coughs, um, the, the lights start to, to dim. Uh, and you can actually see her on the, the screen, uh, the, the, the camera screen, um, you know, just violently coughing. She lifts up her arm uh, as she's coughing. And, it, and when she moves it away, you can see that it's covered in blood. That's true if this is witchcraft. <laughs> Whatever is uh, sustainable. What was that, Bill? Whatever this is, it's unsustainable. I I I, I agree, one hundred percent. It's a, uh, I mean, it's just a matter of time before she either falls asleep from pure exhaustion or she keels over from that cough. Thumbs off the button when I'm saying this too. I'm not. I don't want her to be hearing me talk. Ask her. Right. Okay. Ask her. There's a way to stop it. Yeah, that and who the guy really is in that room. And I forgot the other question I wanted you to ask, but definitely the other guy. All Ask right. about that other guy. We'll start. We'll start with the. Can we? Uh, can we help you? Or wait, can I? Can can I help you in a way to to uh, make it so you don't have to keep saying those numbers? Or can we can we stop this somehow? So let's fix the generator. Okay. Um, where's the generator? Uh, she says, you know, past, uh, uh, she types, uh, in the generator room, past the debris, have to go through the vents in order to get to it. Okay. And uh, last but not least, uh, who's, who's the man in the room, locked in the room? The only thing she types is possessed. Nah. And they, everybody can see the screen. Yeah, she's oh, yeah. typing this. So you're you're all unless you unless you were trying to hide it. Everybody can no, see it. No, no, no. Um, no, are the numbers fine. keeping the generator going? This makes no That's sense. That's good. If there's tools by the generator, do I, we have to bring our own tools down? Um, you can actually see from the camera that it looks like there's some tools in there. Um, so, and, and there's there's fuel in there as well. You can see kind of jerry cans of, of fuel. So I'm going to have to go back up to the truck, grab my tools. We're going to have to find a way to get in through. Well, do we have to go back up to the top to go through the vent that way? Or is there another way in through, through down here? Well, there's uh, been some ceiling. Yeah. So are you asking me or are you asking her? I'm looking around before I ask her just to see what I can see. Or I can ask her, I guess. So you Cooper, said there were air vents, right? Yeah, they're, they're air vents. Cooper, I um you so you all remember that Cooper found that shaft on the outside and could right. hear the generator. Um, right. through the shaft so it, it's not a leap that if that you can somehow get through the the vents to the outside through the shaft All right All right okay i'll go up i'll go back oh uh, wait how can i get back up the elevator can we get that working oh you're going to all the way out no oh, i think he's saying that the air vents will lead there Eventually. Eventually. I'll just get in a vent then. And Chris can come with me because he's a skinny boy. The uh, doc leans in and asks a couple questions before, before Cooper heads off. Um, the uh, the air vents, they, uh, they illuminated? No. Son of a bitch. <laughs> um, he... Is and then uh, last but not least is is what is this some sort of witchcraft or voodoo shit? Um, she types back was taught to me uh, by somebody else. I, I don't know what it is. 
Uh, he called it numerology. Hmm. Is it possible for one of us to take over the number saying? She, uh, assuming you're, I'm assuming you're asking her that. Right. Um, she says, or she types, uh, if you are, um, if, if you are marked like I am, you can. Oh. Fuck that. <laughs> oh, yeah, so Doc's not doing that shit. Well, uh, well, so, so with that, she starts to violently cough harder than she has before. Um, you all look over at the um, uh, the the camera, and you can see that she's kind of bent, o doubled over, coughing. Um, as she does this, you know, again, the, the lights and the, the power starts to slowly dim. As she does this, she kind of stands up, turns around, looks at you, uh, lo looks at you, looks at the camera, and then falls flat, passes out. Oh, no. With well, that, the, the lights start to um, slowly dim. Oh, sure. You can hear the generator slowly starting to, um, to power down. Um, Let's do this. Somebody give somebody roll a d6 for me. I have one right here. Three. Okay. I will tell you when the power completely goes out. Um, I think that we need to get the fuck out of here. Uh, give it, sh shit. Uh, with that, Doc's gonna. Doc's gonna. Uh, let's. I gotta try and wake her back up, and he's gonna book for the the room across the hall he's assuming that's where she is so you, you you go you run across the hall um you go to open it it's it's not locked that you can tell because the the door handle um kind of you know goes down and then you go to open it but it doesn't open it feels like it's barred from the other side you're, you'll have if you want to to get in you'll you'll have to try to break it down um yeah i guess uh, with that yeah i'll i'll kind of just go back across the hall and then run run over and just kick it as hard as I can. Okay. Um, give me a strength uh, times five roll. While, while he's doing that, what is everybody else doing? Zerk, I, I say, Zerk, you stay on the cameras. If the lights go out, you've got a flashlight. Bill, can you fit through the vents as well? Do you think you can fit through the vent? Um, maybe. You try. Me, you, and Chris are going to go through the vent. Oh, actually, or just me and you. Okay. And then Chris, you stay with Zarek. Make sure extra light in here, because in a in a vent, our flashlight will be fine. Because it's an enclosed, but it's a smaller space, so that should right. keep us lit up, and we'll be as quickly quick as possible. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So who who is doing what? I'm watching the monitors. Okay. Um, Chris, what are you doing? Uh, I'm staying with Dr. Zarek. Okay. Flashlight. Okay. Uh, Cooper and Bill, are you both trying to go through the vents? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, all right. Um, Doc, what did you, how did your roll go? Uh, poorly. Got a 74 out of 70. You, you go and you, you kick it. You can feel something give a little bit, but it's not enough for you to, to break through. Um, uh, Cooper and, and Bill, um, there is a vent in, I mean, there's, there's multiple vents. Where, where are you going to try to, to get one? Well, well, one thing is I want to try and obviously they'll all lead, but I want to, based on where we came down and. You mean from the elevator? Try, yeah. I'm going to try use dimensions because I knew the vent. Okay, I, I see what you're and saying. See if I can figure out which vent might be closer. Uh, give me an intelligence roll for that. Luckily, I have quite high intelligence. Okay, that is 68, sir. Is that pass? That is a pass. Jeez. All right, so you can kind of figure out where that is. And if you had to guess, 
you think it's just beyond the the debris. So you, you kind of guess that beyond the debris is the generator room, and you suspect that the um, the vent is uh, either right above the generator or close by it. So you're going to have to go in that direction. Okay. Okay. So Bill, we pick the vent closest to the debris, and we just go. There we there. get going. Yeah. Crawl up in there and start crawling. Okay. Um, so. You are, are you all gonna kind of run over to that part of the hallway to do it, or are you gonna get in here uh, again? There's vents everywhere, yeah. We'll just use the we'll closest just use a vent, we know what direction, so we'll just yeah. pick a vent. So, so, so again, wait, I'm sorry, which, which one are you getting into? The closest, the one closest one to it, yeah. to oh, the closest to it. Okay, I, I'm sorry, I misheard you. So, so you run out into the hallway, um, the, the vent is there. Um, of course, it's screwed in. So uh, both of you, um, you know, give me, do, do it, either you have tools, uh, some kind of tools in your uh, items? Well, I brought, definitely brought a hammer because I, I mentioned that a couple of times. That, yep. I, you, I will say that you can try to use that to, to open up the vent tool, if you mind. want. And I would probably have like a multi-tool. Yeah. But okay. if, if it's a vent, I'm going to take the claw into that hammer. I'm going to ja, try to hammer it in there. And then just do the old demolition routine of just smash my way in. So give me a melee roll for that. Woohoo! Uh, Nineteen out of seventy. So you, it takes you like two or three tries, but you're able to kind of pry that off. Um, as you do, you can kind of see the 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 you know washed out light shines into the vent that's there, uh, and. It, but the rest of it is darkness. Yeah, that's great. It, it is definitely big enough for you guys to fit in, though. Well, that's good. All right. Um, going to go up with uh, what tools we have. Going to have my pistol out in front of me and my flashlight out in front of me. And I'm going to crawl along just in case something awful shows up in front of my face. I can shoot it and shine a light on it at the same time. Okay. Who, who's going in first? I'll go in first. Okay. Yeah. So, so I Bill, was, uh, you you kind of shimmy up in there. Cooper, you start to follow him. Uh, yeah. Chris and uh, Doctor Zarek, you're you're sitting in there. You're um, watching the, the cameras. Uh, the cameras, um, you can you can kind of see uh, in the room with uh, Lisa um, that the when it pans over to the door, you can definitely see that there's like some type of bar or something there that's blocking the door. Um, and you can see when Doc hits the door, the the door definitely shakes. Um, it, when you look at the, the camera, which is to the, the Nexus room, the one that was mostly static, it starts to get clear um, for, uh, you know, a good, you know, five or six seconds. Uh, and you can see what, what you saw in the, in the video where you see this kind of like void in the center of the room. However, you, at some point, you also see this like dark shadow pass in front of the camera. Uh, you can't it, you can't tell what it is, uh, but you can tell that it was very large. Uh, Doctor Zerk, uh, give me a you have if I remember you have post apocalypse lore for shadows. Yeah, go ahead and roll that. Uh, Chris, do you have anything like that? Um, let me have a look. Uh, That's for, I have for Nexus points. Fifty-seven uh, out of eighty. Go ahead and roll that for uh, uh, Chris. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, you said fifty-six out of eighty. Yeah. Okay. Out of okay. Oh, I, I rolled a two. Oh, wow. All right. So um, both of you from, you know, the, the, the Dr. Jerry, the research you've done into the, um, the, the shadows and everything you've seen like that. And, and Chris, this is all finally starting to make sense. You know, everything that you've heard about these nexus points, um, it, it's all kind of coming together. Um, but the one thing that, you know, as this like really dark shadow kind of moves in front of the camera, it actually obscures and makes the the room translucent for a second or 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 op opaque for a second and you know that shadows have never done that before they've looked like shadows you can see through them nothing has ever allowed them to kind of you know you know look uh material uh, i guess uh, right so with that a minute has passed the, the light has started to get uh dimmer um Doc, what are you doing? Um, noticing that the lights are going to starting to get dimmer. He's uh 
he's just instinctively at this point going to head back to uh, Zarek. Okay. And uh, reunite with everybody who didn't go in the air event. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so and maybe. Um, hmm. I, is there is there anything we can we can do to try and try and help those guys out up there? I don't know. I don't know at all. I, I'm afraid that we may have only had a taste of what's beyond this door in the public of the shadows being kind of shadow monsters, but what if they are actually becoming living creatures? What if they are creatures from another dimension and they are in fact solid, monstrous things? Um, something is coming through and uh, if the lights and power go out, it'll get through and then it'll mm -hmm. get into our world may already be there inside that room so all we can do is hope that they can get to the generator and fix it i just don't understand why this is all happening i don't know that we ever will understand but so so with that uh, as they're talking uh cooper and and bill um you are yeah. both kind of shimmying in the direction of what you think is the um uh, the generator and it you know even though you can fit in there it's slow going um it, it's it, it's not easy it's very dusty in there it's hard to breathe um both of you give me an alertness roll yeah probably what isn't helping is i'll kind of be trying to go backward so i can so i can okay so like my, shimmying uh, backwards yeah that's yeah. even more slow going for you <laughs> nope not not me i don't okay. miss it uh just just Okay, so you, um, Bill, your your focus on going forward, and you can see that the vent kind of goes straight and probably a good, um, you know, fifty feet down. Uh, you still have a ways to go. That it, um, uh, the it, it, you can see where it ends in kind of like a light. So so you can see where the the the, the end vent is, um, Cooper. You're kind of shimmying back. You know, Bill is getting you know farther ahead uh, from you because he's you know moving forward, not moving backwards. You're kind of pushing yourself back, and you're shining your light. Um, but what you what happens is as you're going because you're moving slower, you're not making as much noise. You hear kind of echoing down the uh, the vent. Um, it sounds like or the the vent shaft that you're in. Uh, you hear what sounds like another vent being uh, pulled off and hitting the ground. Oh boy! No. Oh. Shit! Quickly! So, so. Move. All right, I'm moving. I'm gonna hurry. I, I, I'll try to turn myself to. Okay. Well, you know, you can't turn yourself around. There's. Oh uh, yeah, I can't. I'm just gonna have to try shimmy. M moving faster. Okay. I'm gonna have to kind of have my flashlight in my m mouth and just try to. So, so what is uh, each, each of your dexterity? Mine is 75. I have no... All my skills are above 70. <laughs> all my stats are above 70. So. Okay. Uh, 60, 12. Yeah. Okay. So, Bill, I will say because you're moving forward, you can move about 24 feet um, every minute. That's about... It, it, it's still slow going, but you're, you're kind of going faster. Um, uh uh, Cooper, you can only move um, your your decks divided by five, whatever that is. The this is it sixteen um, or fifteen, whatever that 15, is. You can, yeah, yeah. you can move that many feet, moving backwards per minute. Um, so so you're starting to move back. Um, with this, uh, Bill has probably made it about halfway. Um, you're and he's you know definitely getting farther ahead of you. Um, just keep going, Bill. Don't worry about me. Just keep going. Chris or Chris or Doc, uh, what what are you doing? Um, that's hmm. I suppose uh, Doc would be um trying to uh, I'd be trying to like grab and like arrange the monitors in such a way that like any light that was emanating off of them would be like pointed towards us and at the door. So should anything get out and come in here that we'd have some added sort of barrier. 
Okay. Um, smart thinking. Sorry, Chris, what was that? Oh, I was just saying smart thinking. Okay. Um, so you, you are able to kind of uh, angle the, um, the, the lights a little bit that way. Uh, the, um, as that happens, you know, another, you know, another minute passes, you can see that the lights have kind of gotten to a point where their normal brightness, they're not really washed out uh, anymore. Um, and you can slowly, you can also see that there's kind of like emergency, red emergency lighting that seems to be slowly powering up as well, probably from some type of like reserve battery or something that, that each has. Um, as this happens, um, all of you can hear this loud metallic bang as something at that uh, hits the vault door at the end of the hallway from the other side. Uh, in fact, it shakes the, the entire place slightly. Um, with that, uh, the three in the control room, what are you doing? <laughs> Fucking tempted to go up that air vent now. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shit. I, we're holding our breath. Yeah. Gun is out and like just clenched in fist. My friends, this may be the last moments of our life. If you believe in a deity, you might as well start praying now. Uh, such a slav. At <laughs> least, at least this will all be done and over with for us. Yeah. Every um, optimist. Okay. Uh, the so you, you I you you three I guess are just kind of staying in the room, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, Bill, you get to the end of the uh, uh, vent. Um, of course, you know the the vent itself is kind of uh, screwed in in place. <laughs> what are you gonna do? I'm gonna beat the shit out of it to get it open. Okay, uh, go ahead and give me another uh, melee roll. Right on. Billy, you at the other end. It is. I couldn't see my dice. Um, I missed on that one. I got an 84 out of 70. So you so. smack it kind of two or three times you're making a dent you can feel that it's slowly starting to move but you don't quite get through uh okay. cooper i'm oh, sorry go on okay all right cooper you um you're you're again you're you're moving slower you're you're kind of back pedaling um you you've got your flashlight out shining it down um you can see at the edge of the light uh well actually no you could actually uh, you can't see anything yet um but the you can definitely hear there's something else in the vent coming coming down. Um, if you if you had to guess, the the vent kind of you know go, follows the 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 same um, path of the hallway where it kind of goes down and then kind of curves over to where that that room was uh, that that locked room. Um, so you can hear something you know moving very quickly down uh, the vent. Um, probably they're probably about at that corner of of the hallway. But you can't quite see it yet. Your light just doesn't shine that far. I'm another sure. minute has yeah. another minute has passed. The, the lights are starting to dim even more, and the emergency lights are um, going up uh, again. the uh, The bang on uh, the the banging on the vault door is happening harder now and more. Um, what, what, the three of you who are in the control room, what are you doing? At that at that point in the Doc's gonna say, oh, you know what, guys, fuck this. Let's not sit around and wait for our death. Let's get in the air vent and follow after him. Like, or, or can we all not fit at all? You could all get in there one at a time. Hmm. I mean, wait, wait, so let, let me rephrase that. Yes, you could all fit into the vent. Um, it's not like you're gonna be like right next to each other, it's one after the other, but yes, you can if you wanted to. It, uh, it, uh... Did the door give any budge whenever you tried kicking it? We could all maybe try kicking it at the same time. See if we can buy ourselves some more time by waking her up. Maybe. I mean, anything's better than nothing. We got to be pro. I, I, I want to die with my boots on. Let's try to break open the door. Well, uh, we can see in the monitor that there's something barring the door. Do we have a knife or something we can slip in and like 
knock it loose, whatever it is. I think one of you has a knife. Yeah, I think Cooper has the knife and he's not. Here. Cooper definitely has one. I thought one of you had one as well. Chris, I thought you I, had one. I have a hunting knife. Yeah. You, you can absolutely. Can, if we can dislodge whatever it is blocking the door. Yeah. You go ahead and. Um, uh, to, so, are all three of you going to do that to try to get well, that open? Then? For one person to try and open that. Right. But I mean, are, are the, the other two going in there or are yeah. you staying in the control room? Okay. Wow. So, yeah, um, Dak would go. Chris, uh, give give me a give me a dexterity times five roll. Dexterity. Oh, that's a sex. So yeah, nice pass. So so it, it takes you a little bit, but you somehow you're kind of able to to find this like little crack in the door and just maneuver the knife in the right way where. Uh, you can kind of hit, feel it hit whatever's barring the some like metal pole or something on the other side, and you're able to kind of flick the knife up, and you can hear it topple to to the ground uh, on the other side, or at least you know one side of it topple to the ground. As that happens, you know all three of you are standing in the hallway. The vault door at the end of the hall. You hear another bang uh, against it. This time it reverberates down the entire hallway, shaking everything. All three of you give me a sanity check. Oh. Um, you, uh, you zero if you pass one if you fail because uh, as that happens as that bang hits the door you can see that door bend outwards uh, um, I failed okay so just lose one if you fail um, again if you hit your breaking point let me know um, the door swings open you can see uh, the woman Lisa lying on the ground, her uh, you know face down. The um, right next to her on the ground as well. This was kind of hidden from view of the camera. Is another person. They're lying there dead. It looks like they've been dead for uh, a number of days. They are covered in those um, those uh, numbers carved into their skin as well. The guy um, in the hallway must have been helping too. There's three of them at one point. Yeah. Yeah. But, so the two in the vent. Um, Bill, give me another uh, melee roll. Bill, any progress? I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Drum roll, someone please. Someone get the vent for us. Oh, I got a 79 that time. <clears throat> so I missed it by nine points. So it, it it's starting to give. You think one another minute, and it's going to give. Um, Cooper, you've kind of backed up to where... Uh, um, Bill is now. Uh, your your feet are, are touching each other's uh, feet. Uh, you're shining your light down, looking, um, and you can hear that the 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 noise in the vent getting closer and closer. It's reverberating. Bill, you can even uh, Bill, you can kind of hear it now, but you're not really paying attention to it. You're you're very focused on what you're doing. Um, no hurry. Uh, at the edge of the light, Cooper, you see this uh, a man's face appear. He's got these like dead blank eyes just staring at you as he starts to crawl towards you as he sees you. Uh, would, I be, would I even be able to get my gun out? <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll let you get your gun out. <laughs> this is, oh, this is going to really hurt the eardrums. <laughs> like, go, go ahead. If you want to shoot, I will, yeah, I'll let you shoot. Go ahead. Yeah, I will shoot. If he looks human, right? It looks like a human. Yes, yes. Thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it looks human, but oh. then again, so do possessed people, so. Okay, that, that's a fail. <laughs> that's fail. So you, you both, Bill, uh, actually, everybody hears this gunshot, um, but Bill and Cooper, it just, yeah, it just rings off. You know, it hurts your ears. The The bullet just kind of goes off into the vent somewhere and, and sticks. Uh, you were basically pulling out the, the, your pistol at that time, but you didn't quite get a, a good enough aim uh, to shoot. Um, the, you know, again, your, your ears are ringing. Uh, the ringing of the ears or the noise doesn't seem to affect uh, the, the man who's coming down. Um, Is so, the light affecting him at all? Uh, uh, your flashlight is not that bright, uh, yeah, so yeah. It, it's not really affecting him, uh, that much. Um, so l let me put it like this. So have, have you seen what like a mag light looks like? Those really powerful yeah, flashlights. Yeah. That's kind of what you need in order to affect the, 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 the shadows. The light that you have is 
um, more uh, more like a best way I can describe this is like a uh, a flashlight who has like half batteries where it starts to kind of get that almost yellowish dim. Maybe it shows like maybe about ten feet of, of light or so. Um, but but to, to kind of place where you are versus where he are where he is, you are at the end with uh, Bill. He is at the, the kind of the far end, just beyond the vent that you went into. Okay. Um, so uh, with that, uh, another minute has passed. Um, the the three uh, within the kind of radio room. Well, what are you doing? We're trying to revive the girl. Yeah, Doc would immediately start t administering to her and trying to get her to come back to consciousness. Okay. Um, go at you, you turn her over and her she's just got blood co coming down her uh her mouth uh, her, the front of her shirt is covered in blood some of it dried it's not very obvious she's been sick for a long time um looking at her um you can kind of see what looks like a puncture wound in um her abdomen so it looks like yeah at some point she might have been attacked and this is just from some type of internal bleeding um but you can what you can do is um, you can either give a first aid roll or a medicine roll. Uh, a first aid roll will, will uh, mechanically, a first aid roll is gonna heal a, a number of hit points. Um, a medicine roll will kind of bring her back into consciousness. Okay, so if I like... So a first aid roll is just gonna, gonna kind of patch her up a little bit. Uh, the, the medicine roll will kind of patch her up and kind of bring her to consciousness. Um, the first aid roll might. It, it all depends on what you roll. Okay. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to go with medicine. Okay. Go ahead and roll. Well, while he's doing that, um, Chris and Dr. Jerk, what are you doing? Just sort of watching it for okay. me. 60 out of 60. So yes, that would be okay. <laughs> so so you kind of start pa uh, to patch her up, you know, kind of you know doing what whatever you need to do. You've got that first aid kit uh, that you found, um, mm -hmm. so that is definitely helping a, a little bit. Um, she kind of you know starts to cough, uh, spurts out some some blood um, a, as she does, uh, and her eyes open, um, and she tries to start to say something, but she just can't speak. Uh, but she's at least conscious. Yeah, um, uh... I guess the, uh, I, I would give her some water at that point. Okay. Yeah. Um, Bill, you take the, the hammer again, hit it one last time, and the Ooh. thing goes flying. Uh, it opens up. You can see that the room beyond is a generator room. Uh, the generator is slowly going. Um, it's just barely has enough power left in it, but it's still kind of kicking a little bit. And you, um, so, so you've done that. Um, what are you doing? And then we'll get to Cooper. All right. Well, I'm going to drop down in there and I'm going to try and figure out what is wrong with this generator. Okay. So can diagnose it quickly. Do you have, so do you have like a uh, mechanical uh, cra craft? Like heavy machinery. That'll work. Um, not yet. Can't figure it out just yet. My dice have abandoned me, gentlemen. I'm sorry. Okay. 60, 68 out of, out of 50. So you, you you start looking and the um you you're you're just kind of you know looking through the, the machinery. You're trying to figure out that you know what's wrong with the generator. You can't quite figure it out yet. Cooper, you you feel that Bill has kind of kicked that through. Uh, has gone out. You look the 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 guy at the other end is coming towards you. He gets to the point where the vent uh, opens up to where you crawled into it and the uh, and stops because the light shining in is still bright enough that he puts his hand to it, into it and then immediately pulls it back and is just staring at you. What, what are you doing? Uh, so he stopped, completely stopped at the For the moment. I don't want to... I'm going to push myself to the edge of the bit. I'm not going to go into... The generator room, and yeah, I'm not. He's. I'm just gonna shoot it again. Okay, <laughs> go go ahead. It's like point blank, isn't it? 
Uh, yeah, this is probably p- close enough for point blank. Um, I can't remember what, what point blank g- gives you. Uh, what I'll say is, uh, it, what, what's your firearms uh, skill? Uh, my firearms is 50. So we'll say that pushes it up to 70. Oh, that literally, I would have failed. So I've succeeded now. All right, cool. So you uh, go ahead and uh, roll damage. And I have a nice damage bonus as well. Uh, well, damage bonus is only for melee. Oh, is there any melee? No, not with a handgun. Okay. No, I mean, it's damage bonus. Only. I didn't realize it was only for. Yeah, yeah. Melee. Damage bonus is only for uh, kind of hand to hand combat hand-to-hand. or knives or things like that. Strength. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That is seven points. Seven points. Awesome. So, so you hit him, um, kind of right in uh, between his his neck and his shoulder. Uh, you can feel you see the bullet go in. It kind of explodes out, and the um, uh, he definitely kind of moves back from the impact of the bullet, but he continues to stare at you. Uh, doesn't make doesn't scream out in pain or or anything like that. Um, oh, hurry the fuck up. What another is- minute has has passed the lights are going uh, much more dim uh in fact it's kind of the, the lights now are at kind of like a uh they're they're, they're dim uh it, it hasn't got to the point where the emergency lighting has uh kind of outshone them yet but it's getting pretty close those of you who are with lisa what are you doing lisa we need you to do the number thing we're almost out of time. We just she goes someone. and she tries to speak, uh, but she just starts coughing up again. She doesn't seem to be able to. I'll uh, just keep like trying to like get get her get her to drink water, pretty much. Try and clear if there's any blockages or anything in her throat, like dry blood or anything like that. Okay. Um, you, you, you go and you, you start doing that. Uh, it, it seems to be helping a little bit. Uh, Doc, what are, what are you doing? So she said the only, the only way it works is if, if you're covered in those numbers is to start saying them and see if the power goes up. Yeah, it would, it would take us an hour to carve those into your skin. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I'm wondering if it needs to be all of them numbers all at once, or if you just need to carve them in over time. <clears throat> um, I suppose uh, Doc will. This is kind of crazy, but Doc's gonna ask Chris for his knife. Uh, yeah, I hand it over to you. Yeah, he's gonna pull up his sleeve and start carving some numbers into his arm and grab that mic. So, yeah. so both Dr. Zarek and Chris take a uh, sanity. Um, give me a sanity roll. Uh, Doc, you lose uh, one point of uh, hit points uh, as you're doing this, as you start to carve the numbers into your skin. Um, I got double zero. Oh. Oh, okay. no. I, I also failed. So uh, I, I cred failed. <laughs> oh so, wow okay so normally i would have said probably said it only would be one but um both of you roll a d4 um it's just overwhelming with with what uh doc has just started to do i don't like what's happening Please. i take another two points okay four Oof. Right. so if i grab the mic and i uh push it on and start saying the numbers as i'm doing this does it have any effect not yet no oh, fuck. Okay. The 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 banging on the the door uh, outside is starting to get louder and more violent. Um, Cooper and Bill, uh, what are you doing? Okay, calm down. Take a deep breath. Go step by step, looking through every single thing I have here, and I'm gonna try to give a systematic kind of breakdown. I'm going to start with checking the fuel, checking the oil pump, checking all that stuff to make sure I figure out what's wrong. Okay. It's just being haphazard and all crazy. <sighs> Here we go. And I rolled 51. <laughs> Missed so, it by one. Oh. Missed it by one. <laughs> um, so you 
so you think you figured it out. You, 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 you're looking around, you think you figured it out, what, what it is. It looks like there is a, um, a blockage in one of the, uh, the, one of the hoses um, in order to, um, that, that's blocking it from, from actually working. The, the issue is that uh, in order to do that, it's going, you need to remove the hose, clean it out, and then put it back in. And um, that's gonna take you a while to do. Um, Cooper. Oop, uh, it's going to take a minute or three. Uh, okay. Well, is he still stood still? Uh, he is still uh, looking at you. He, he's bleeding down, um, but uh, and he looks very tense. Like as soon as he can, he is going to move as fast as he can down that that vent. Uh, to me, he's too much of a threat, and he needs at least slowing down more. And I don't know if I'd... Because obviously he's clearly possessed. Do I know if the shadows can still come after us after the possessed body is killed? Are you asking, do you? Yeah, do I know? Um, do you... what? You don't have post-apocalypse lore for shadows. Um, give, me, give me an end times five roll. Okay. We'll see if you know that. Know that or not. Okay. Uh, no, that, I got seventy-one out of seventy. So. You you may have been told that at some point in time, but you can't remember. There's just too much going on. It how how light is it in the generator room at the moment? It's 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 dim. And you, he's you, wait, you, He's waiting for the lights to go out. Uh, you you think less than a minute he's going to be able to start going coming down. If I take a shot, I don't have enough. I I won't have enough time really to get out because of the position I'm in. Uh, no, fuck it. I'll I'll, I'll get I'll get out because then I can at least get myself in a better okay position for when so, he pokes his head. All right, so you kind of jump down and you kind of aim for 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 him to. Yeah, I'm I I'm get close enough that as soon as his head, like. Okay. So, so that will you're, you're aiming that will give you an extra twenty percent on your uh, um, your uh, skill the when you when, if and when you shoot next. Um, so, all right. So uh, another minute passes. The lights are getting really dim at this point. They're not completely out. The generator is very much slowing down. Um, Doc, uh, give me a pow times five check. This is extremely painful and difficult to do. Forty-two out of eighty. Uh, so you can you you can uh, so if you want to you can continue to kind of carve these uh, into you. I see no other course of action. Okay. I mean, so uh, at that point, um, take uh, another uh, two two points of damage. Um, so three total or two points total. Three so three one, total. Three total. Okay. Yeah. Um, you you're you're trying to you know do this. Um, you're, you're, you're carving these numbers and you, you've got at, you know, almost a full set of numbers on you. Um, go ahead and give me a power roll, a power times five roll. Sorry. Another one. Uh, 80 out of 80. Um, so you, as you do this, um, you can kind of feel the, the lights flicker a little bit uh, more, uh, a little bit brighter, uh, and then immediately go back down. You, you think that you're not quite done with com kind of completing you know, what you need to uh, for this. Um, Chris and Dr. Zarek, what are you doing? Watching in horror. <laughs> I'll uh, like rip a bit of my sleeve off and give it to Doc to bite down on. Okay. Um, Oh, well, and maybe to, to sop up some of the blood. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I used to kind of keep the workspace clean so I can keep, so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. Um, you, you're doing that. Uh, Bill, um, do you have, uh, go ahead and give me another um, mechan or heavy machinery roll. Okay. So here's what I do. I managed to un unclip it. I'll tell you what I rolled in a second. Okay. Unclip it on either end, pull that thing out, go over to one of the jerry cans, 
pop the lid off the jerry can, break a little in my mouth, and blow it through. I rolled an 11, which would be a critical, and just blow that diesel fuel right through that, that hose. <coughs> I think this might work. I still, let me get it back in the machine. You, um, you, yeah, you do that. You're coughing. It's hard to breathe. But all, as you do that, all this gunk just comes flying out. Um, the, uh, and so you, you run over to try to start, you know, putting it, it back together. Um, Cooper, uh, the lights have dimmed even farther now. And as soon as they start to dim even more, you can hear this thing um, coming, uh, this person coming down uh, fast. And, you know, they're not slowing down. And at some point they kind of, you know, you see these hands grab the edge of it and they pull themselves in. You see his face come flying in. Are you shooting? Yes, yeah, straight away. As soon as I see even like, a, a fragment of him, I would have shot, so... So you are you are absolutely going to hit. It's point blank. You had extra range. Um, I'm pretty sure that that would push your skill over a uh, hundred. But go ahead and roll, and we'll see if you get a critical. Okay. Uh, that is an 06, so it's not a critical. No, not, not a critical, but you still hit. So go ahead and roll damage. Yep. Okay. Fucking nine points of damage. So you, as he pulls his uh, arms forward and his head. Um, appears you are ready for him you let loose with the trigger and his head just explodes as this happened um give me uh, for, give me a sanity check just oh, you because because uh you know bill is very just kind of you know focused that's a fail okay go ahead and do a we'll say a d4 Oh, if I if I get three or four on this, I at my breaking point. So, <laughs> four, fucking so, four. So you see. So what happens is you blow his head off. You know that is not something that would normally you know freak you out. Uh, it's still you know pretty gory. You just killed a person. However, what as as you do that. You can see because he was there was momentum with him. He was pulling himself forward, and so his body comes into the room. As he does, the um, uh, the 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 body just starts to disintegrate into ash, and you see this shadow start to appear from it and come directly at you. Um, so the way because you only have one action, oh, so. You you only have one action, um, so I'm going to roll an attack. However, we are still we are still going to use your roll for um, basically defense. So what what did you roll with that? It was a it was an 06 to I Okay, so I'm going to say what what happens is as this happens, you just go completely still and catatonic. Um, you are just um, you, you just can't move. You're just in too much shock. You're going to be like this for five uh, five rounds. Um, but we're still going to use your roll. We'll, we'll, uh, I'll give, but I'm going to give you a 30% penalty. So it's like you rolled at 36. So I have to roll a success and well, let me, let me see if I roll what I roll. So I rolled a success. Um, and I rolled above your 36. I rolled a 51. I needed a 55. So, so mine, mine beat you. Um, you, um, the shadow, uh, you're the only one who sees this. Bill, you're too focused. Um, this shadow comes straight at you. You're just kind of, you know, you, you can't move. And you can feel this thing just go inside of you. You can feel your head just start to uh, almost like expand out as this thing enters you. Give me both a sanity check and a contest. Well, con's my con's my highest, but I'll do with Sam first. That's a fail on the old Sam. Okay. So, <clears throat> and seventy-seven on the is, con. Is that a, a success? A success. Okay, so you lose two hit points. Um, so the um, because you you failed the Sam, right? All right, so you don't lose any sand, but 
um, you uh, are now possessed by, by this thing. You, if you would have succeeded both roles, then you would have um, uh, been able to kind of control it uh, somewhat, but it is, uh, it is taking you um, slowly uh, decaying your, your, your body. Um, every day you, you will have to make a POW test. Uh, and if you fail, you lose uh, six, uh, 1d6 of hit points and 1d6 of con until your con reaches zero and you turn to ash. Um, but uh, you, so we'll say for motivation, this, this shadow is now controlling you. Um, I will let you act as you feel appropriate. Um, with that, another minute has passed. The three in the control room, Doc, um, you are continuing to, um, to carve you know, the, the, uh, the numbers into you. Uh, go ahead and lose one more uh, hit point from that and give me another pow roll. Um, Chris and Dr. Jerk, what are you doing? Helplessly watching in horror. <laughs> yeah, or probably like both in shock, like the huge metal door being. Oh, we understand near. what he's. Yeah, that thing yeah. is about to get out. I'm uh, not I'm, sure that we're going to make it. And our comrades slicing himself up, so we're pretty. 28. We're in a stance. Yes. Okay, so you you pass. Um, the the you you start to um uh go and um you can feel like almost like an energy starting to flow through you somewhat um give me a roll uh, do you have a d8 uh yes seven okay lose that many willpower points um and the, the lights kind of stay, they, they don't dim any farther uh, as you're doing this. Um, okay. So it seems like you're at least keeping the, the status quo. The lights are still very dim. They're almost about to go out, but it, they didn't seem to go down any further. Um, Bill, uh, you are still you know working on this furiously to try to repair it, right? Yep. All right, so, so you, are, you are going through, you are doing this, you are um, uh, just, uh, you, you, it's going to take you about 30 seconds to finish repairing it. And then you can flip the switch and it will go on. Um, okay. So give me an alertness roll. You obviously heard the, the gunshot go off. I rolled an 18 out of seven, uh, out of 60. All right. So. Cooper, what are you doing? Oh, well, I'm possessed, and I'm going to stop. So I, my plan was to just go point blank, and like, can they use gun? I guess. Yeah, so. yeah, you absolutely can. Put, shoot them in the head, because obviously. All right. So, uh, Bill, uh, you, um, you're, you're kind of focused on this, but it gets really quiet in there. And so you think something is up. So I'm going to let you have an action uh, of okay. what you want to do. <clears throat> um. Let me put it like this. If you turn around, you're going to see him pointing the gun right at you, point blank. I'm going to turn around and shine the, my flashlight right in his face. What's your dex? My dex is a 60. Um, Cooper, what is your dex? Uh, my dex is 75. Cooper, you get to go first. Um, so... <laughs> now, now, Bill, you can, you can try to dodge if you want. Or, or fight back. Okay. Um, dodge or fight back. Uh, never let it be said that I'm not going to go down swinging. So I'm going to fight back. Okay. So um, the way that you would fight back, um, uh, you've got your flashlight or whatever in your hand. Um, I will let you either swing it at him or you can try to shine it at him. Um, let me put it like this if you swing it at him, it's a melee attack. If you shine it at him, it's a dexterity roll. Well, I'm gonna go with the uh melee, melee attack because it's a okay. Roll for me. Yeah. Okay, Cooper, uh, go ahead and roll as well. Bam, and let me know what you both get. I rolled a 95, I missed. And I got a 22. 
Okay, um, so Cooper, or Bill, you swing around. You you see right. Cooper holding the gun right uh, about a foot away from your face. Um, you go and instinctively, you know, swing the uh, the flashlight at him, but you're just not in time. Cooper right. pulls the trigger. The bullet goes through your head uh, into the generator and just completely, you know, if you were still alive, you would hear that the generator just start to sputter and spark and just completely shut down. With that, the three of you in the other room, Doc, you could feel the power flowing through you. You you could finally start to feel that, you know, it, it's starting to build in you. Uh, the lights are finally starting to build. And then you hear this gunshot from somewhere else and all the lights go out. The only thing that, that, that is on is the emergency lighting. At that point, the, the doors, um, the, the, the vault doors, you can hear this click as some electronic lock unlocks. For a second, there is silence. And then you can hear this immense roar as the door just slams open. You can hear this, you can feel this rush of air come down the hallway. And as that happens, even though it's dark, there's that red emergency lighting still on, this dark mammoth shadow with what can only be described as tentacles or these pseudopeds flying out from it comes pouring into the hallway, pours into the room that you are at and immediately engulfs all three of you uh, in, in the shadow, uh, possessing or destroying your form as it takes you over uh, briefly, and then you all turn to ash. Cooper! <laughs> and thus we end. Wow, so good. Wow, man. I apologize for my dice, guys. Oh, no, I apologize. For no, my that was great. At the end. That was great. Well, let let me tell good. you. Uh, so let me tell you when I had, I can't remember who rolled the d6. Whoever rolled that, you were literally on your last minute when all of that happened. Um, Bill was about to fix the generator, which would have started it back up and you would have been able to escape. But that shadow coming in um, would have, so, so let me, let me kind of give you an alternative version of what would have happened. If Cooper had not shot him uh, and killed him and the shadow kind of came out at that point, um, the shadow, the, the, the guy would have come into the room uh, I'm uh, guessing that he would have tried to uh, attack Cooper. I, Cooper, I don't know how you would have fought him back, but then Bill would have fixed the uh, the generator. The lights would have come on and it would have destroyed him uh, and, as well as keeping the other shadows back and you would have been able to escape. <laughs> but it literally came down to the last minute. Well done. Well done. Was uh, really like, good. That's, the, that's the perfect ending. If, Some great if, I, if I passed that sand roll... I would have had control, slight control. Yeah, so so when you get possessed by a shadow, you make a sand check and a con check. If you pass both, then uh, the and I'll just read what it says. Um, if, if both tests were successful, the host body is one of the rare examples which is not corroded by the presence of the shadow. Such victims can theoretically survive forever while possessed. Um, so with that, I would have allowed you to be I probably would have made, had you make some some pow checks, but you would have been in control. You would not have died uh, eventually. Wow. But would I would I have died when the uh, power came on because of the light beam? Probably not. Yeah. In, in that case, if you had passed both, I wouldn't have made you die. In fact, probably what I would have done um, is that it would because it happened so quickly, it would have actually thrown the shadow out of you, or more probably more importantly. Um, it would have been going into you when the lights went on and would have killed the shadow or destroyed the shadow. Uh, yeah. I would have let you survive. But uh, instead, <laughs> we're uh, all gone. I fucked you. Let's, <laughs> let's go ahead and finish it and then we can talk some more afterwards. Our players included Mark Anthony, uh, Josh Harwood, Patrick O'Brien, David Kennedy, and myself, with Tyler Hudak as the keeper of the secrets. We have a Discord server where you can chat with our other members. You can set up a private game and learn the finer art of gameplay and game mastering. There's a link below. We're currently producing up to four shows a week with music and sound effects added in post-production in order to create a richer listener experience. 
We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Podbean or iTunes. The costs involved with the show are provided almost entirely by our patrons. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. If you'd like to help support our show, please visit our Patreon account. Just a dollar to a month helps us a lot. You can find a link in the description below. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows. And leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answering any questions you might have. This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure in the universe of HP Lovecraft. Until next time, good luck and good gaming. Thank you.